Um, so the major event that is occurring is that, uh, Stephen, you are just finishing uh, opening up your bookstore slash bar. I don't. What was the name that you got? You decided on for it. Oh God, I don't remember. It was something. I remember it was something annoying, but I don't. It was. Remember. It was something very annoying. I do not recall what it was. Something annoying. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah. Um, so you're going to be there basically for the opening. That is opening, all right. Um, plans were already kind of made, uh, Jonathan, since you're a writer, uh, it was put forth that you might, you know, do a book signing for the grand opening. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be up for it. All right. And, uh, Ryan, are you going to be attending as well? Uh, hmm, is there any reason I should not? Would the... Would I have any other duties or whatever to attend to? Um, I mean, you sell drugs usually, but, I mean, you could take a night off. Yeah, I'll go, unless Stephen wants me to do anything else. Alright, I'll wait for Mary to get back. Actually, you know what? I'll stay in the house. Alright. <laughs> After some decision, Ryan decides he will hide in his room. Alright. Oh, Good wait, time. no. Good the point. house is a drive away, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, alright, yeah, I'll go. Alright, so now I'll we're going. Now all these things, you know? Um, well, he's going with Carrie and you, so. So, I could either, like, you know, cling on to you guys, or maybe hang around outside to find a vantage point. <laughs> Has sniper post? Basically, yeah. I, I mean, Ryan would do that, I think. All right. Yeah, you could definitely do that. Is that where my Remington is gone? <laughs> All right. So, uh, we'll deal with Ryan in a minute then. So, Stephen and Jonathan, you guys are both at the bookstore. Um, it's, you know... Fairly busy. Uh, obviously, it's, you know, Gary. It's not, you know, Chicago or New York or something like that. So there's not a ton of people in there. Um, and, of course, uh, Lucy is also present as well. Oh, well, then, of course, Ryan comes. That's true. Yeah, that's right. He's like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, you're going to be here. Uh, well, do I know she's going to be there? Um... Well, you know that Jonathan is going to be there, so it's a fair bet. Actually, she probably would have mentioned it, yeah, since you guys are sort of dating. Sort of dating. How old is she physically? Um, she is... Uh, Actually, I think I should decide that, shouldn't I? She's, she's late teens, but can pass for early, you know, 20s. Hmm. I will just say... There are people out there who are on record as saying that they would love to go out with a 15-year-old, so mm -hmm. I don't think it's a problem. <laughs> I would be on record as saying you're always obfuscated and she doesn't know how physically old you are, really. But, you know. Oh, that's true. I would especially be obfuscating when I'm around her to make me less obviously ugly, actually, come to think of it. <laughs> Do you, the question is, do she you think she's appearance? dating Steven? <laughs> do you, do you keep the same appearance for her each time or do you change it? Uh, well, so the problem, well, let's see, we had our first one on one, -on -one encounter whilst I was, uh, selling, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, she would probably be able to put two and two together and if I were to change my appearance, that oh, that was my drug selling appearance. So from then on, Ryan would decide, okay, I have to pick an appearance for being in front of her, and I have to make it less ugly than I actually am. So I'll have a consistent appearance that I use when I'm around her. Okay. Okay. All right. So you guys... Uh... Head in, obviously, Stephen, Terry, and Ryan would be the first to arrive, you know, before the store actually opens. And, uh, yeah, it's, it looks pretty nice. It's probably the nicest place in Gary, but, you know, that's not really 
a statement. Yeah, it has a roof. Yeah. Well, I'm sure I've done some renovations. Yeah. So you got everything there, and after a little bit, uh, you guys notice, well, Ryan, you notice that uh, Lucy has arrived. Uh, Stephen, you notice that Lucy and Jonathan have arrived. Mm -hmm. And, okay. uh, yeah, so this is, I don't know, you weren't really, you didn't see them together uh, too much in the last session, but yeah, immediately. Well, I did put two and two together when he yeah. was very concerned for her. Yeah. That that was why he was sort of humming himself a little tune when he came home, which was very unlike Mike. So yeah, um, once uh, she comes in, like she immediately goes over. Uh, she well, she knows you and Terry, so she presumes the other one is Ryan. He's got his consistent obfuscate appearance. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, she goes over and um, basically leads him off to talk in mm -hmm. a back corner. Or talk with this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Terry and I always gave look. <laughs> knowing look. All right. Um, and of course, Jonathan, you've arrived as well. There's a little All stand right, set up for you to start your book signing. Right. I'll politely greet my comrades, and then I'll get set up. All right. You do have a few moments to speak with Stephen if you uh, wish to before uh, the. All right, in that case, I'll bring up the idea I had before. So I'll go talk to Stephen. All right. Ah, uh, Stephen, may I have a moment of your time, please? Of course. Right. This might be a bit of an odd request, but do you think it at all possible that I could perhaps stay at your place for a while? <laughs> I realize it's a strange request, and I would be willing to pay you for the privilege. <laughs> Stephen does not break character. I just want you to understand, Stephen is stony-faced. I'm just remembering that Mystery Science Theater we were watching a little bit ago. <laughs> I'm going to give you up. <laughs> now, Stephen. Now, I can I can assure you I have an explanation for this. Please trust me on this. Um, so Stephen Stony Face, as as you say this, um, will tentatively ask, <laughs> "Is there a problem with your current haven?" The haven itself is fine. It's uh, the company being kept there. So I will glance over at Lucy. Not her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so do I have, how many rooms do I have in my mansion? Um, there are no more bedrooms since Derek's <laughs> still there, so he would be sleeping probably on the couch. Um. <clears throat> um. <laughs> Yeah, there are couches around. You could sleep, I guess, in the home theater, maybe. Um, There's no sun there. <laughs> I could okay. buy a mattress if need be. So, an, so, air mattress. an air mattress there. Uh, so, okay, so Stephen does, does show a, a small amount of surprise at this. Um, but uh, he sort of tentatively agrees that we could... Try it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> this place is like a frat house. There's just vampires all over He's the place. It's like, what the hell the hell did I get into this? <laughs> Would you? I mean, I'd imagine you'd want to hear an explanation. Well, he gave me one that he doesn't like the people, which apparently does not include himself. I'm not sure who else is living with him. <laughs> and I honestly, at this point, I don't think I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so there's something going on. So it, this is this is not this. There will be an understanding that this is not necessarily permanent. It's we'll, not. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> it's all it's like Jonathan is getting divorced, and he's <laughs> like, I need to just crash. I don't know what you think. Anyway, I'll just be like, um, you may you may use a couch at my place for. A period of time. 
In that case, you have my thanks, friend. Stephen takes back. out his notebook. I'll, I'll, I'll go to a um, minor. I've got to boom. sign the book. <laughs> there is minor boon written down on the notepad. Another knowing look exchanged with Terry. <laughs> So and and a quick whisper to him. Well, this is certainly going to be an interesting evening. Right. I think the ladies don't know that he's gay yet. <laughs> that might be what the problem he is. He doesn't know I'm gay, right? <laughs> I'm not sure if he knows he's gay yet. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you just set up and <laughs> sign the books. Yes, I'll sit down and I'll sign the books for the. <laughs> <laughs> Two or three people that come here. All right. Quite the crowd, I'm sure. Actually, how many people live in Gary? Um, how many? Uh, I don't know. I think it's well. The number has gone significantly down since uh, a few decades ago, uh, but right. it is in the thousands. I'm going to assume it's at least the size of Dallas. Yeah, it's like, no, it's pretty big. 15, 20, 000. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's over 100,000. So, you know, I mean, we get 100 people at a bookstore. Okay? Yeah, no, you've got quite a few. Okay, okay. Yep, I'll uh, sign the books then. Oh, should I assume, should I exude any kind of, uh, like, pleasant aura while I'm in here? Just to make the place seem nice. <laughs> Well, uh, either that or just neutral. I, I would, I would hope you wouldn't do like some sort of fearful aura. Well, I mean, if you want, you want to build up pipes. So. So and. I figured I might as well. Like, why not? Just make sure the people coming in here are having a pleasant time. So now this is a, like a coffee shop bookstore. Yeah, you. Sort the original uh, layout I got was like a coffee shop, bookstore, bar. Yeah, I was gonna say, and then like after four, it's a, it'll serve alcohol. So there will there will be some adult beverages. All right. Let's see. Yeah. So you start your signing. You start your pleasant aura. And. Uh, yeah, so things seem to be going pretty well. Nice. Uh, Ryan, you spend your time with uh, Lucy. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's pretty intense. Uh, but, you know, you managed to get through it. <laughs> she runs her hands through your hair. Yeah, no. So does obfuscate? How does it work with no. obfuscate? Um, I think it usually. Um, I don't remember. I know like heavy touch like breaks obfuscate. I don't know. I don't think like light touch probably would. If you wanted to put it. I would have to look it up though. I mean, you know, I don't know. Yeah. As long as like he's not body slamming her, I think. So I guess as long as his proportions are the same, yeah. as whatever he's obfuscating, yeah, maybe just changing his face. Okay. I'll go with that. I'm just trying to make it more difficult for you to <laughs> Mary to actively sabotage. To hide your ugliness from this beautiful corridor. <laughs> now the only the only awkward thing about this new setup is that um I have to keep going back and forth to actually type anything in the chat, so <laughs> well I was gonna say you can sit we can rearrange. Um yeah, I guess we could. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just rearrange, then we can sit and chat. Get more dead air for the Australian yeah. community because that's what we love to do. Well, you know, if they can get the fuck over it. We're on episode five at this point. <laughs> they know. <laughs> the it's like, oh, over. okay. They do dead air. I'm surprised that uh, Coolum's stream 
at, by like episode 13 still has like a, I'm, I would just be a series of angry grunts by the time we're at episode 13 <laughs> I think <laughs> All right. Okay. Here we go. Let's see. All right. So yeah, Ryan, you're hanging out with uh, Lucy, but um, she steps aside okay. for a little bit. She's like, well, I should probably, you know, see how Jonathan is doing. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> I can't leave him unattended for long. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's like, he was talking with Steven earlier. I wonder what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> Steven was looking mildly amused. Okay, well, um, Ryan probably feels a pang of jealousy whenever she mentions Jonathan like that, but... Yeah. I suppose, yeah. I suppose he would slink back to Steven once he gets left by Lucy. All right. Yeah, she's like, I'll be, you know, right back, you know, ten minutes. So uh, as you're heading over, you notice there seems to be someone kind of weird staying in the back of the crowd. A lot of people are kind of, they're either looking at the books or they're hanging out around Jonathan, getting their books signed. There's this one guy who's basically sitting in a back corner. He looks, um, basically he looks kind of like a homeless guy, um... But he's got um, a guitar, like, strapped to him, and he's kind of, like, playing a few notes on it, sitting on a chair, just kind of in the back corner watching you. Some kind of hippie drifter, basically. Well, uh, I noticed this guy. Yep. Hmm. Uh, That's wrong. Right. So... Uh, need I ask that he looks out of place here? Oh yeah, he looks pretty weird. He looks... Okay, well, so uh, I guess that reminds me actually what Ryan would do in, in a situation like this. Is there a bathroom or anywhere else I can run up to to obfuscate and then come back? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I assume, I mean, Ryan probably has a key to the back office, I imagine. Um... Sure. Oh. <laughs> the obfuscate closet, as he calls it. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> the janitor's closet, he's got a key to that. <laughs> Alright. Alright, cool. All right. So, um, I'll obfuscate and occupy a, an unoccupied corner of the room or whatever, which, uh, as long as I can main guy. Alright. Yeah, so when you come back out obfuscated, this is where you really start to suspect something's weird. Uh, he's still watching you. Alright, I'm gonna still be watching him then. Alright. So you guys just kinda stare at each other across the distance. And uh, yeah, he's content to just basically sit there and keep strumming away. Singing cool. songs directly to you. All right, so we'll leave them alone together for a little bit. Uh, so, Stephen, Lucy uh, comes up to you on her way over to uh, Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Says it's, you know, very nice store. Oh, thank you. Uh, I saw you were talking with Jonathan earlier. What was... I don't know, you seemed like you, seemed like you were on the verge of laughing. I don't know. I, I assure you, no. I don't um, think I've ever seen you so animated. <laughs> I had an unusual request. Oh? I don't I'm know. I'm not in the area, voice. right? I can't hear them. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're in the midst Damn of. It. Well, I'm, yeah, I, 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 I don't. I spy them by the corner of my eye. Just run over. Hey. <laughs> intrude upon domestic affairs. Mm-hmm. But apparently, Jonathan would prefer a different haven. I see. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? <laughs> I will speak with you later. <laughs> I simply nod and go about talking with others. <laughs> so. 
Uh, Lucy then finishes coming over towards you, and uh, she's like, um, <clears throat> hello, Jonathan. Oh, hello there. How are things? We need to speak. Apparently we need to speak. Excuse me, <laughs> fellas, one moment, please. So no, she, get uh, signing and I'll, uh, she I'll go talk to her. She pulls you away uh, from the crowd. And immediately yep. takes you, uh, she's like, Ryan gave me a key, and she takes you into the janitor's closet. How am I going to be in the back office? <laughs> 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 he, I don't know, he thought it was a present or something, so I got this for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh, uh, Stephen's, Stephen's locating an actual secret haven, because apparently now the entire town of Gary knows where he is. <laughs> He made the key in the basement <laughs> key yeah. lab he set up. <laughs> Something like that. Good lord. Toradors appreciate art. I made this for you. <laughs> it's, it's, a, a it's a really rough <laughs> cutout key. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> so yeah, she's like, uh, what's this I hear about you relocating? Ah, you heard about that. <laughs> well, I was planning to keep it a surprise, but uh, I know, or well, I've noticed rather, it's been quite impossible not to, how you and uh, Miss Alicia seem to feel about each other. So I think the two of you a bit of privacy. Besides, being a bit more selfish, it can be somewhat distracting. It can be hard to focus on my work with that happening so often. All right. Give me a charisma plus empathy to see just how well this goes over. Uh, as I recall, that's seven. <laughs> and may I add, sire, have you noticed how hot I am? <laughs> Ooh, should I spend a little power point here? <laughs> I don't know, should you? Um. I think I should. Yeah, I think I should. All right, will PowerPoint spent. <laughs> That's how socially awkward this is. All right. So she um she looks at you, and then she's like, "I see." And then she uh, just turns around and leaves the room. And, uh, Ryan, you know, eagle eyes that you have, uh, you notice, uh, Lucy will go into the room, uh, with Jonathan, and then she comes out, and she seems to be, um, you know, she's kind of, like, hiding her face, like she's, uh, might be crying. Well, I rushed over there immediately. All right. So she will, uh, immediately, basically, you know, throw her arms around you look to you for comfort. Um, since, uh, you know, bloody tears are running down her face, she, you know, basically has you take her out of the store before there's uh, an obvious masquerade breach. You're fucking welcome. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate wingman. <laughs> Guess his plan. You've graduated from number one fuck up to number one wingman. <laughs> Right on. Oh, you, you owe me a minor boom. Um, <laughs> the problem is that uh, if she gets closer with Ryan, she's going to move into the same oh, house. God, the whole <laughs> house is going to be filled with these people. <laughs> Stephen's going to have to move out. <laughs> this oh, is like on. a Sabbat communal haven. You've just got vampires God. coming and going. I know. I'm like, I'm getting... we're going to declare my house Elysium. Because <laughs> apparently that's where. Because apparently be. half the kindred population <laughs> lives there. Apparently. Like anyway, I will go back to signing books again. All right. I'm her. running a hostel for, <laughs> for homeless vampires. <laughs> Actually, that wouldn't be a bad way to start accruing minor boons. But <laughs> well, I suppose I've already got one. Yeah. Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Cleaner business than drugs. Yeah, I guess. You know. But I need the drugs actually provide the money to pay for the house where everybody's living. <laughs> All right? All right. 
Let's start. Okay. So anyway. All right. So uh, as this is uh, continuing, uh, Stephen, you see there seems to be a young man uh, approaching you. Give me a second. Okay. I will switch over. Stream. So a uh, young man approaches you, and he uh, says, the "Guy told me to uh, to give you this," and he hands over uh, a small package. All right, I will take it. All right. So the package is about seven inches wide, nine inches long, and one inch thick, about the size of a small notebook, and it is carefully wrapped in brown paper and tied with string. Okay. So uh, is the young man still standing there? Um, yeah, he's just standing around, um, just looking a little bit dazed. Ah, like you've been dominated. Yeah, it somehow. looks like that's the case. <clears throat> I see. Well, um, I will, I guess, take out my, there's nothing, there's nothing suspicious about this package. I'm assuming it's some sort of book or something. It yeah, it like looks like it. Or, or it feels like a notebook. Okay, so I will, um, well. All right, take out my pocket knife, cut the string, and okay. unwrap this thing. Inside is a small notebook. Binding is rich, dark leather, uh, delicately tooled into complex scroll work. Uh, the leather is obviously old, but has impeccably been cared for. Inside, the blank pages are the finest vellum. In its entirety, uh, the book is probably worth... Uh, you know, some money. Some money. This is a good. So I will. Is if the young man is still standing there, I will ask who who gate who told him to bring this to me. All right. <clears throat> um, he kind of gets sort of a peculiar expression over his face, and he says, "I don't really remember." Okay. So, what is your name? Uh, Russ. Russ. Okay. And uh, where did you receive this package? Uh, he says, <clears throat> uh, I, I don't really remember. Okay. <laughs> huh. Well, um, thank you. I guess. So yeah, he uh, checks his phone. He's like, oh, I should probably get going. And he starts to leave. <clears throat> um. Huh. Okay. Not sure what I should do. Do I have him followed? You can. Can Terry follow him? Yeah. Okay, follow him. Uh, and as you're going to speak with Terry, out of the, uh, the book falls a loose sheet of paper. All right, I'll pick that up quickly. All right. It is a handwritten note in a very neat style. It reads, uh, Dear friend, I will soon have an item in my possession that, considering your, shall we say, interesting background, you may well find of great value. This item is, in fact, a manuscript of great antiquity. I am as yet unable to confirm its provenance, but its creation would seem to date back to the 14th century. Its actual contents would seem to date back even further, perhaps to the pre-biblical period. I apologize for being so circumspect, but you will understand my need for caution. This manuscript is described as the Apocrypha to a work with uh, with which I understand you are familiar, the Book of Nod. Mm. It has been expressed to me that this manuscript will be of inestimable value to you in your search for Golconda. The Apocrypha will soon be available for purchase. 
When this transpires, I will once again make contact with you to inform you of the details. In the meantime, please accept as a gift that which carried this note. Uh, although a mere bagatelle, I hope you will accept it as a token of the respect in which I hold you. Yours, etc., Dennis Hairden. Okay, I don't know any Dennis Hairden. No, you do not. Okay, that was odd. Yeah, it certainly seems uh, suspicious as fuck. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. So, can I get Terry to follow that guy? Yeah. Okay. And just see where he goes. Yeah. He meets whoever again, and I will. Um. I will. Pocket this in my satchel. Okay. For now. Yeah. Odd. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah. The uh, the book signing continues, and uh, you know, around midnight or so, it starts to, you know, taper off basically. Okay. And yeah, from the looks of things, the uh, the opening was a not a tremendous success, but good for Gary. A good, the, probably one of the best successes yeah. Gary's had in a while. Yeah, definitely. All right. So did after Modius, did Modius come to my book opening? My book, my book store opening. Um, he did not. Thank fuck. If you invited him, he said that he appreciated the invitation, but he uh, would be unable to attend. He doesn't usually like um, gatherings. Yeah, I understand. But to show my deference, yeah. I of course did invite him. He did send you, however, um, one of his paintings to display at the bookstore. Ah, wonderful. <clears throat> so a good one. Um. Yeah. Why don't uh, you give me a perception plus uh, academics? Uh, three, I believe. Um, I mean, it, it looks good to you. Okay, okay give, uh, I have five. <laughs> <laughs> Can, I'll you don't know art, Stephen, but you know what you like. Stephen will form his own opinion. <laughs> um, it looks like, um... Technically, it seems to be a little bit lacking. Basically, it looks like it starts, or well, it's a basically it's a Dante esque sort of version of hell, mm -hmm. and there is certainly some feeling behind it. Um, but it seems like the technique started good, but then basically became sort of lazy. Mm. That's Mobius. Yeah. So was he originally a painter when he was? What, what was you don't he know. Uh, we don't, I don't know his original background. Interesting. Presumably a painter, since he sent you a painting. Okay. Well. It is signed Mobius. Well. Very well. It will be displayed. I'm not sure it's going to be the most prominent piece in me. <laughs> <laughs> it better be if he comes in there. Well, yes. It will obviously have a place since he wasn't coming tonight. It's off to the side. But. <laughs> I'm sure that your amateur class could really use it. So, all right. It will have a place of somewhat prominence, but should a better piece come along? Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, yeah, and after Ryan, after crying on your shoulder for a little bit, Lucy uh, eventually, you know, thanks you for being so supportive. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, she says. It's, you know, it's good to have, you know, someone that you can count on who's always there for you. God, everybody's going to be living in my house. <laughs> I can't stand her. <laughs> so she... Well, unlike most people, I am pretty dependable. Yeah. So she uh, gives you a hug, gives you a big kiss, and uh, she says that she is going home uh, for the evening.
Uh, okay. Well, I suppose I'll offer to uh, bring her home to make sure she's okay. That's normal. Uh, yeah. Um, she says, uh, I don't think so. I don't think that'll be necessary, but thank you very much for the offer. Wow. All right. Um, it's mostly because that she's going to be driving herself home, so by you taking her home, it usually it just kind of means you sitting in the passenger seat and then having to hitch back. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, Ryan, don't you want to invite her to come back with you to your place? <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't have a place. I don't think <laughs> there. What was that, oh, David? That reminds oh, me. I, I, did, I did go over the... Uh, sorry, you first. You first. I, just, I was just going to say, I don't think we're there yet. All right. Oh, he's moving slow. Right. Uh, what I was trying to say was, I did go over the uh, accident I had with the car with her. Like, explain what happened. Yeah. yeah, no, all that was happened, you know, off screen. Okay, good. Just, just making sure that it's not a surprise to her at some point. Yeah. <laughs> you know, how many days do you have to be on with a girl before you take her back to the home that you share with the older with the old homosexual man. Like... young man that you, uh, <laughs> that you... <laughs> Stay at. I don't know. You gotta, be, you gotta be certain, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, Ryan's a gentleman. That's true. You know, Lucy's pretty fast, apparently, with the whole Alicia thing, but, you know. She knew Alicia Did for a she? while, yeah. Yeah. yeah she and knew. is that that's still going on while she's dating Ryan? Um, it's. Mary, we've already established on this stream it's not <laughs> cheating if it's gay. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. That has been firmly established. Right. I just does is Ryan aware of this? I don't know. I don't know how Ryan feels about that. Uh, Ryan, what is your Ryan is aware. what's your intelligence plus Malkavian time? Plus Malkavian time. <laughs> it's two. <laughs> it's not I cheating. If it's Ryan gay. Not All right. So Malkov is on board you with understand. the lesbian turtle. Okay. Now, if she were with a man, that would be very offensive. Mm -hmm. So, as we... I, I guess I should clarify with Jonathan uh, <laughs> when this whole stay at my haven thing begins. <laughs> 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 Whether it's this current evening or later um and then i probably need to tell ryan <laughs> that we're going to have another new edition all right <laughs> why don't you handle that then <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah he's so so first i will approach jonathan and uh say uh, you know are you is everything still you know, uh, is your request still in play? <laughs> and More so than ever. And I would also like to ask why you told her so directly. Uh, was not aware that it would be a problem. You said she wasn't the issue. <laughs> also, I, I assumed you would speak with her before Also, me. I assumed as your sire you would have discussed this with her previously. Um, secondly, when were you thinking about beginning this new arrangement? Oh, I will just say, Mr. when Lucy Bible. drove home, she drove home in the car that and that's you brought what here. that prompted me <laughs> to ask this question. <laughs> the sooner the better. I see. <laughs> um, do you have any items that you need, wish to, uh obtain from your old haven. <laughs> uh, out of character, I suppose only um, the notebook and my little handgun that I'm carrying would be all. Yeah, I mean, you might want to get your typewriter. I can get by on notes for now. I'll get it eventually, but it's not, like, massively important. Yeah, yeah you're carrying probably your gun and your notebook on you, so... Well, good. I'm glad that we will not have to stop by the Haven and have some sort of domestic scene. You're going to need to get your clothes, obviously. Yeah, but I can get them tomorrow at the very yeah. least. 
With appearance five, you know Jonathan's got a sizable wardrobe. There's an entire suitcase filled with fedoras. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then since we're wrapping up here, I guess I will uh, find Ryan, wherever he is. Are you invisible or are you visible? Uh, actually, no, I'm not just talking to Lucy, so I guess I broke my invisibility. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I guess I would have been immediately after I was done with her. Is that guy gone, the suspicious guy? Uh, yeah, he's gone when you come back. Ah, uh, fuck. Well, yeah. right, I also want to point out that I'm probably in a terrible mood now. <laughs> with, like, I'm still behaving nicely, but you could probably tell if you spend time with me that Dude, I'm not You just finally really got away from those hot. two hot women who kept trying to have sex with you. You should be on top of the world. <sighs> now you're free to be with the men you love. <laughs> you, Stop just left. Oh, you just left a haven with two hot chicks constantly trying to bang you. To live with, with a group with a of... bunch of ugly men, <laughs> of like, <laughs> like, like I, I four men to blood on me for fuck's sake. Um, just anyway, <laughs> whatever. Um, man, I wish I had somehow like set up that song from Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with the boys. Yeah, we're having volleyball in the backyard soon. Um, all right. So I will. I get. I will. Just call out to the room that I need to speak with Ryan, wherever he is. Can he please appear before me? I will appear before him. All right, so uh, I will put a steadying hand upon his shoulder and uh, sort of veer him off and say, uh, Ryan, it, apparently we will be having another house guest. Um, Jonathan has requested to come stay with us for a few nights. I just wanted to. All right. Uh, Ryan, what is your courage? Courage? My courage is five. All right. All right. So the notion of yet another person, I mean, you've just gotten over Derek being there <laughs> in the past few months. The notion of now, like, another man in the Haven... Um, it starts to panic you, but you do manage to keep a hold of yourself. All right, good. Good. Very good. Yeah, I assure you it won't hopefully be for very long. <laughs> <laughs> Ron. We'll, we'll, we'll make do. We'll You've make already do. got the security precautions in place, you know, sleeping with the bed in front of the door. Oh. Gun and quarter staff in oh, hand. God. So, have we um have we still not installed a lock in my bedroom? Um, by this point, you've probably installed the lock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can have a lock. All right, perfect. I assume it's one of those like it's not even like a doorknob lock. It's just like basically a padlock that you've just drilled into <laughs> the side of the like door. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, as long as Steve, as long as Steven isn't playing, I didn't care about aesthetics. Um, it's in your little closet, so, I mean, it's not on the outside of the door, so it's fine. Nobody goes into your room. Yeah. Nobody goes in. Problem solved. No one cares. All right. So I was assuming he had, like, like, <laughs> like the ten locks on the door, like he'd start at the top, he'd put in the bolt, and then the padlock, and then there'd be the chain... And then there'd be the deadbolt. <laughs> I mean, can I do all, all that? Yeah. I mean, if you want to. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have I'll, I'll have as many locks as possible. Like literally, the only limit is the length of the door. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so you and Ryan go into his room, and then there's just ching. Chink, click, chink, click. The funniest thing <laughs> is that it's still like an interior door. I know. So like... <laughs> you just bust the locks all stay there. The door is gone, but the locks are all still there. The locks in the will door still break. be there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, but he's Malkavian, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So yeah, you guys, uh, um, you get a text from Terry that basically this guy he followed him. Um, you went back to um, <clears throat> an apartment um, in kind of the suburbs, sort of between sure. Chicago and Gary. Okay. Um, and he's just basically been in there. All right. Well, I'll have Terry come back and take us home. All right. Yeah, he comes by and picks you up. <laughs> and uh, he just looks in the rear view mirror. And he's like, I'm so... I'm in the front again. I'm yeah, he's front. just like, so I guess uh, <laughs> there's just going to be a lot of boys in the house for a little while. Um, yes, it will be like school days. <laughs> and kind of... Yeah. At <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> basically. So he pulls up in the driveway, and as everyone's getting out in the garage, he kind of takes you aside for a minute, Steve, and he's like, and I notice... I, you know, I, whatever you want to do is fine. I just noticed that Derek hasn't been making a lot of moves towards leaving. <sighs> now there's... Yes, Terry, I know. All right. I'm aware of our issues. All right, I'm just... All right. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, you and I may have to make some moves. <laughs> I mean, at least this one's hot, right. I guess. Uh, <laughs> it's not my type. <laughs> if you would just take off that fedora, yeah, my I know, it's the fedora. <laughs> I swear to fucking stop with the fedora. <laughs> it's a new university. He's not wearing a fedora. He's never worn one his entire life. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new job. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. So, All right. Anyway. Hmm. <laughs> so. So if there's nothing else for us to do, I'm going to down to my laboratory to look at this book that I've received. Yeah. I do not know what everyone else is doing. Oh, and um, give me a second. Give everyone, give me a perception plus alertness rolls. Four. Four. Six. Specialty if it's far away. Actually, that would probably apply here. Alright. So yeah, um, as you guys were driving around back to the Haven, you did notice that there seemed to be... You're not sure, but it looked like someone was following you. Um, Terry did, when you point, Terry was able to mm -hmm. lose them. Oh, okay. You're not sure if they were following you, but they were... But we feel like they've been lost. They might have been. They might have been. There's... Well, there's no need to follow me. Apparently, all of the vampires <laughs> in Gary live at my house now. <laughs> so I don't know who would be left to follow me. Yeah. But... But yeah, pretty okay. much... Um, Jonathan definitely noticed it. Um, Ryan noticed it. Um, and, uh, Jonathan, you were already kind of on guard because you said you've been watching out for, like, hunters and things like that. Oh, I, uh, does Stephen know about this whole hunter issue? No, he doesn't. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. It might be a polite thing. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Too bad, you already said yes. <laughs> so, yeah, you definitely evade notice before getting there, you All made right. sure there was no one on you when you actually pulled into the haven okay. itself. That's good. I'm glad. For the record, if you ask, I'm going to say no. I have never heard of this before. <laughs> well, I don't think to ask, because, although I know that there are hunters in yeah. the thing, but I guess I don't. I don't know that they are specifically after Jonathan. They could have been after Lucy. They were definitely after Lucy, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Lucy. Yeah. He's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Stephen is not going to be Why would they possibly be after me? Yeah, I can think of a lot of reasons. Anyway. So you're researching the uh, well, I'm researching package. the package that I have been taking the appropriate um, mystical precautions of whatever. Yeah. It might be. Yeah, so um, give me an intelligence plus a cult. That will be seven. Specialty analytical. Uh, 
Yeah, you're pretty sure there's nothing magical about this book that you can tell. You closely examine it for a while. Um, Just a well-cared-for old book. And while you're doing that, uh, Terry takes Jonathan uh, into the... Um, well, the, the sitting room has a window in it, so obviously that won't be suitable. He takes you into the uh, the home theater room, which has a couch. And he uh, kind of helps you get set up there. <laughs> Fine. He's like, and you know, if you want to watch movies, you can. We've got Laserdisc, uh, VHS. But, uh, you know. Just don't, just don't disturb the professor. I had no intention of doing it. All right. As long as I get some peace and quiet, write my books, get some sleep, that's all I want. All right. So. <laughs> it's like, we've also got uh, a games room upstairs. Um, you know, if you want to use that, you're free to. Uh, you know, if before you use the Nintendo 64, uh, ask Ryan's permission. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> These are the house rules. Terry going over the house rules. He does, uh, when he shows you the games room, you notice that there is a pristine condition Nintendo 64. And, of course, in the cartridge slot, I haven't asked David specifically, but I think we both know it is... The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. <laughs> Majora's Mask. <laughs> Obviously. Why? Gold Cart Edition. I was really worried you'd say wrong one. Obviously. <laughs> we all know which one it's supposed Very to be. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Steven is down and he's got his hands on his... <laughs> What is this book that I have? Um, it looks like it's a journal. No one's written in it yet, except for the one page that had that has um, a really the oh, message so it's on a it. Journal, it's not a okay. Yeah. Hmm. So what does the entry say? It, it's the entry I read to you. It's the the page that fell out. Oh. Interesting. All right. Jay, you've never heard of this Hedron guy. Herodon, I thought it was. Is it Hedron? Herodon. Herodon. Yeah. Okay. Not Hedron, I guess. Herodon. Mm. All right. So, can I do some research on Dennis Herodon? Yeah. Who do you want to, um, do you want to just do it on yourself, or do you want to use one of your contacts, or? Um, I might. I haven't talked to Scotty in a All bit. Right. Let's see what Scotty knows about this. Do I, what do I know about the Book of Nod? Am I aware of the book? Of you Nod? definitely know. Um, it is basically the the vampire Bible. Um, it's that's where the traditions come from. You know, Cain he wrote it sp supposedly. In he, Cain wrote it in the sense that Moses wrote. You know, the book of mm -hmm. Exodus. Right, right, right. Um, and yeah, it talks about you know the first city, things like that. Um, you've probably read like the most common you know snippets. Um, you've never seen, like, an original manuscript, though. Um, so that's, and if so this, this is, is apocrypha, it's even more rare. Is the guy that wrote in the in the journal. Yeah. Okay. And so he's saying that he has a copy of that Book of Nod. Well, he has... Well, the Book of Nod is also... I mean, it says Book of Nod. It's obviously not one book. Like, there are fragments of it, and this is supposedly an apocrypha. An apocrypha Book of Nod. But it's from the 14th century. The copy was, the yeah. The copy was. So I think this would probably be a valuable piece. Definitely. I mean, you. This journal was quite valuable. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Yeah, here we go. So, um, yeah, so let me, uh, let me call my buddy, uh, Scotty there. All right. So, yeah, uh, Scotty basically will take down, well, as for, you know, all the information you have on this mm -hmm. guy. And say, you know, let's find out what you know about this right. Dennis Herodin guy. Um, says, yeah, uh, 
he has some contacts. He can, you know, basically check with his contacts in the police, see if they have any, if there's any police records on this guy, mm-hmm. anything that they know. Um, he does ask for you to forward him some cash for bribes and things and expenses. Because this guy's sugar daddy as well. I, <laughs> I see how that goes. He has a PayPal account. You can just... Uh, anyway. You can, follow, uh, you can follow Scotty Cartwright on Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Has he in his... Um, <laughs> In his researches, come across something called the Book of Nod. Um, he has not uh, heard anything about it. Okay. All right. Then I'll also do my own little googling. Okay. See what I can come up with. So yeah, there's nothing um, immediately on like Google or anything about. Uh, heard him. After a little while, uh, Scotty gets back to you mm-hmm. and uh, says that this guy does apparently have uh, police records. All right. So yeah, he's known as the. Uh, he gets in contact with someone. He says he has a friend in the FBI. Got in contact with him, and apparently he did some <laughs> Is that research. William Shepard. It's someone. Okay. <laughs> uh, apparently he's known as an international fence who deals with objet de art. Uh huh. Objet d'art and uh, antiques. Uh, which are often stolen from museums and find their way into private collections. Um, basically, everyone kind of knows it's him, but they haven't Can't been able prove to prove anything. it. Basically. Gotcha. You got nothing on me, coppers. Um, he does have a... Um, he can give you, uh, like, a apartment um, and... Or, like, a, an address and a phone number. Okay. All right. Very nice. Thank you, Scotty. Good job. Give you a little bonus. All right. So, he says, you know, you might want to be careful with this guy. Of course. Always. All right. Thank you. Interesting. Still not sure why it came to me. Yeah, it hmm. obviously. Right. I mean, Scotty doesn't know you're a vampire, but right. everything in what he said didn't indicate. Yeah. He has a very mortal presence. I feel like this must have been a mistake in some way. Except for the part where he's talking about Golconda and the Book of Nod. Yeah, but still, why? Uh, uh, in my pursuit of Golconda? Yeah. I, I didn't realize I had a pursuit of Golconda yet. I mean, it would be nice. Whereas, whereas oh, the Nosferatu guy know. apparently did. Yeah. Hmm. Something as fishy is definitely going on. Okay. All right. Well, how much time do we have left this evening? Um, you've got a few hours left. So where is this address? Is it over in Chicago? Um, yes, it is. Do I want to just try the phone number first? You can do that. So let's call the phone number and see what happens. All right. So the phone number is just a, um, it's basically like the default voicemail thing. It's just like a computerized voice. It says, it gives the number that you Mm -hmm. called and then says, leave a message after the beep, and then it just immediately switches over to uh, hmm. voicemail. I don't know whether I want to leave a message. All right. Yep. Don't let him know you're on to him. Well, he's going to see that I, the number that I called, possibly. But don't well, I don't know which phone did you use. Did you use your burner phone, or did you use your... Well, obviously the burner. All right. Well, in that case... So. I don't know. Doesn't prove anything. 
That's why you guys hmm. have the partner. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, I'll go upstairs and see if anybody wants to go for a ride. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. So. So is there anything in particular that you guys have been doing in the meantime, hanging out upstairs? Writing my book. All right. I'm rather taking notes for it, I guess. All right. Ryan, what are you doing? I got nothing. Okay. He's just staring at a wall. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Yeah, but there's nothing Mask. on the screen. All right, there's <laughs> nothing on the screen. Like, we all can see that. <laughs> He's just there with the controller, staring at a blank screen. I've almost got it. I've almost got it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Ryan has been stuck in the water temple for 30 years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway. You know, now that you have uh, another guy living there, there are four of you. Uh, if you get uh, Derek, you could all do four-player uh, Goldeneye. Okay, I called the shut up job. <laughs> no. Yeah, you know no. Steven is Well, I've, I've figured you were in the four. Mm -mm. It'd be Terry, Derek, Jonathan, <laughs> and Ryan. That would be that would be who it would be. Oh, All right. That makes sense. Ah! So um so anyway. Jonathan gets stuck with the fourth one, which isn't even a real Nintendo 64. It's like the cheap third uh, party like Mad Cats <laughs> controller. <laughs> All right, so, um, hmm. Yeah, so I'll ask if anybody wants to um, take a ride into, where's the address at in Chicago? Um, it is in Newtown in Chicago. It's kind of a, <laughs> well, why'd you ask, Ben? Well, I just want to know if it was in Chicago. Yeah, it is. Okay. I told you that already. So, all right. So, does anybody feel like uh, taking, uh, like having a, an adventure and going to check out this address of a possible interesting item? Yeah, well, well we better investigate them. All right. John, I assume you're going rather than sitting lonely in the I dark room. I wanted to write his book. Writing. So I don't know. I've invited him to come. Honestly, that sounds pretty, uh, pretty tempting, sitting alone. But nah, I'll join. <laughs> All right then. So let's, uh, we'll just drag Derek along just for grin. Um, I'll assume Derek is, is indisposed for some reason. Uh, he's playing, he's, with, the, he's, he's playing, playing with the dogs. Yeah, he's, okay. he, he's taking care of the dogs. All right. So, um, I guess I'll ask Ryan and Jonathan if they've ever heard of a man named Dennis Harridan. Um, yeah, neither of you two have ever heard of him before. Hmm. Right. No good. All right. Well, apparently he's got something that I feel should have been going to somebody else. I'm still not certain that this is for me. But but I'd like to have it. <laughs> so 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 we better get there and kill him and take it before so he finds out what's wrong. Let's go let's go check this out. Okay. And I don't probably have Lucian's uh phone number, do I? Um no you do not. All right, so we'll head on over. Terry will drive us to uh, this address. All right. So it is the entire upper floor of a two-story uh, brick building on North Clark. Hmm. Um, you can see the ground floor is stores. There's a used bookstore and an antique store. Um, and then inside, I mean, it's the basic setup. You got the stores, and then there's uh, stairs <laughs> leading up to the apartments upstairs. Um, okay. Originally for Wendy. Shop owners would probably live up there. Okay. So, 
So, I guess we'll, uh, does it look like a rough neighborhood? No. I mean, there's an antique store and a right. bookstore, so it's... So I guess I'll head on up the uh, flight of stairs. All right. Who is, who all is going with you? And who's staying outside? Uh, staying outside. Well, I'll go if you let me be obfuscated. <laughs> you can be obfuscated. Grant. All right. Terry suggests that he kind of stay outside to watch, to make say, sure no one follows after you, yeah, keep the car running. Keep the car, yeah. I would suggest that. In that case, I'll join. Okay. So. You guys head up? We'll head up. Okay. Get ourselves killed. So you um, reach the stairs and start uh, heading up. Um, and when you reach the top floor, you can see there is a, uh, a door which presumably leads into the apartment. Mm -hmm. So I will knock on the door. All right. Uh, he does not, there is no response. Can I hear any movement inside? Um, give me a perception plus alertness. And I'll use aspects. Yeah. Um, that will be four. Okay. Uh, yeah, you do not hear anyone inside. Okay. Do we want to break in and have a look around? Well, obviously we want to break in. Are oh, we going okay. to break in? <laughs> that would be the question. Much Are better question. I certainly want to break in. <laughs> so, yes. Well, let's so go get him to do it then. Are we Are we going to break in and have a look around? Um, and I'll just say, I mean, obviously I assume Ryan is already making... Ryan, Ryan's already got the lock. He's made out. preparations to break in irregardless. So I'll yeah. tell you what you see here. It looks I, like... I have my hands wise with me. These look like, these locks are of the finest quality. Um, and it looks like this is, you know, pretty well secured. Obviously, you could get through it, but, you know, you admire the craftsmanship that went into these locks. <laughs> As someone who recently went on a lock shopping spree. <laughs> You're like, no, these are the expensive ones. These are good ones. Yeah, I've done my research, so I know what I'm doing. All right. All right, well, so look, I mean, will, yeah, so will we decide to break in? Because then we can start talking about how we'll do that. Um, so, yes, obviously, we're, we're going to have to. Um, All right. So. so just be careful and, and, and look out for traps. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, can I have a description again of what the building we're in is like? Is this a, a block? Is this a house? So, yeah, what it is. That? Um, it's. A building it's two stories made out of brick the ground floor is basically two stores one is a bookstore one is an antique store they're small for stores but they are still you know store sized um, and then the entire second floor is one apartment um, so you've got one door leading in which is from a staircase that's located between the two stores and uh, you're standing in front of a door which has a series of pretty high quality locks on it and you would not be surprised with the quality of these locks if there's some sort of alarm system as well. Okay. So, um, hmm. a situation like this, I believe there were two main ways that came off when I was looking at breaking in places. Okay. So, this is still like a private residence, so we're not expecting like, you know, fucking uh, secure, like proper security systems or anything. So, we should, uh, if we were to cut off the power, it should at least temporarily disable the alarm system. So, I love um, that David has planned for this. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I was. That's why I was joking about you know fucking intelligence services have 
having a double take at my internet history. <laughs> Ryan has never been more yeah. excited to use his knowledge. Yeah. So we'll have to um, head outside either to find a if if uh, on the side of a building the uh, the like power box thing is exposed. We'll have to tamper with that. If not, we might have to cut like a power line, but hopefully not. Okay. And um, the lock, uh, does it, let's see, is it like a really high security door or is it just a fancy lock that would still rip off if I just viced it? Um, let me check to see what the book says. Um, it's a high quality lock, but the door is not, um, it looks like it's the original door that was on here. So it's not. Okay, so the funny, not thing, the funny thing about when you get a, a nice lock installed in your normal door is that it becomes, it, it never makes it any less hard to just rip the fucking lock out. I love that Ryan is saying this. Yeah. <laughs> As he's giving us a little lecture on, you know, I'm you explaining put this really this nice you lock in this old crappy door. It really doesn't do much. Okay. So yeah, um, Stephen, you're the other smart guy, so I need you to handle the part. I need you to head back out to the exterior of the building, see if you if the power box is on the wall somewhere and you can't just blow the fuse on that. Okay. All right. Um, give me a uh, perception plus investigation. That would be five. And you've got your aspects still. And I have my aspects. Yeah. So, um, you find the power box. It's, yeah, it's out there. It's exposed. It looks like no one was planning for this. Okay. So, is it like a, is it like the meter? Can I just pop the meter out and then the power goes out? Um, I, mean, I watched my electrician do it out here with like a screwdriver. It's <laughs> not that hard to take the thing out. Um, give me an, uh, you don't probably have the actual technology skill, but just give me a straight, uh, intelligence, uh, check to see. All right. If you know how to do that, if your character okay. knows how to do it. Because I got my pocket knife, so I should be good. Uh, yes. Four. Okay. Are you wearing your, um... My gloves? Yes. All right. I always wear my gloves. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, well, you don't take it out cleanly. All I right. will say that. All Since right. you have gloves on... The botch doesn't inflict damage on you. Right. Nice. Um, suffice to say, the power goes out, though. <laughs> um, basically, you jam a metal object in there. Yeah. It, you have a little Even conversation with yourself, like Could in that. that... Been a science? Can I know about science? Come on. <laughs> it's like remember that episode of Always Sunny where oh, they're well, talking I'll, about. I'll, well, I'm Christian. jumping. And then I'm uh -huh. grounded, so. Yeah, no. So you try jumping. Well, you jam a metal object in there. It basically explodes. Power's out. Okay. You're well, safe because you're still wearing your gloves. Okay. Um, okay, so I move quickly then to vice the lockout on the door. Okay. Apparently I, apparently I don't understand about electricity. Um, yeah. <laughs> you had a little accident and it... Come on, I don't know why science wouldn't have been in there. You accomplished the mission. <laughs> it Done. Didn't, it didn't look pretty. <laughs> Done. Uh, you looked surprised as fuck when it happened, but you checked and there was no one around to see it. So it's it's <laughs> so. like, wow, rats must have bitten through the wires. <laughs> uh, you're, you do notice you're probably going to need a new knife because it's yeah. kind of been slagged. Oh, okay, I've got a new knife. All right. So, uh, Ryan, what is your uh, strength? It is uh, uh, four, three plus one potence. Okay. Oh, uh, that's what I should have done. I should have remembered to go hunting for blood. Yep. I got blood pills. Shut up. <laughs> that's true. Uh, you guys did say you wanted to go hunting. I would say during the bookstore, there were enough people there that you had the opportunity for each person to get uh, two blood points. Thank you. Me included? Yes. Nice. 
Well, do I succeed with the door? Yeah, I'm getting to that. Okay. All right, and you've got your vice, right? Yes. Okay. So is Ryan Bloodbound to a Lucy yet? No. <laughs> Not that you know. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you oh, handled this. You've been preparing this like every day of your life. So you just <laughs> pop in this vice. You got potents, just bam. All right. This is like... Okay, they're totally going to know we were here. Right? <laughs> they're totally going to know. Like, this whole we're going to sneak in thing. You're is... like, Steven's got it. Pop. <laughs> and then you just, yeah, pop this thing right open. All right, well, I'm hurrying back up the stairs. Yeah. As fast as my little hobbled knee will let me. So, yeah, uh, inside there I is... Thumbs up to Terry as I go by <laughs> Uh, he kind it should of actually, it. it should probably only be me going through all this because I can obfuscate because there's security cameras probably. That's true. Oh, that's true. Okay. Oh, wait, does the obfuscate work on security cameras? Well, I was going to say security cameras will be disabled because I just said there's that's no true. power. That's true. The power's out. There's no power. There you go. <laughs> Fine. Um, there's no power for the entire block at this point. You are, though, the only person who has a, like, a balaclava to put over your face. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, I guess you guys can uh, take off your jumpers or whatever and wrap them around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll do something. All right. I'll, I'll pull my uh, trilby down. Okay. So yeah, inside, uh, past that door, there is a second door which opens up into an entrance hall. There is a living room. Uh, it looks like there are some bedrooms. Um, one of which has been converted into an office. There is a kitchen. It uh, looks like all the windows have uh, burglar bars on them. Um, there mm -hmm. is, once you're inside, you see that there is definitely an alarm system, which will probably go off once the power is back on. Which won't be for a while, because it's fried. Um, yeah, you could also, uh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that, that's true. It's not coming on for a while. If you want to, you could also just bust the hell out of the alarm system now that you're inside, too, I guess. Uh, you, you know. We could also just wreck his house. Ha. <laughs> let's, let's, let's not cross a line here. Right? Um, I think the line is pretty But I think, I think we're just getting petty at the point where we just trash the guy's house. I mean, we've it's already true. damaged his door and, and um, caused serious damage. All right, let me continue here. The apartment is high-ceilinged. Uh, with perfectly cared for hardwood floors. All of the furniture and artwork is from the Edwardian era and is all authentic. Jonathan. Oh, wow. Uh, and probably Steven. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, so it's valuable. <laughs> loot, loot, loot. <laughs> well, we'll do that to cover our tracks if we find anything, like, that I'm looking for. Yeah, they'll, they'll think we were just, like, actual robbers. Yeah. All right. So we probably should take a few. If I, uh, so, like, Ryan, Ryan's, like, already grabbing shit. He's like, come on, Steven. It's only suspicious if we don't take something. <laughs> All right. I, I will go with that. All right. Yeah, so that's basically what there is here. Um, there's basically the bedroom. There is an office, a kitchen. So I can't find anything pertaining to... Um, if you want to look, but tell me what room you okay. want to look. So... I will say... <laughs> you don't have the alarm going off, but with the explosion and power yeah. outage, some we people don't may... have a whole lot of time. Yeah. All right. So what looks to be the most like master bedroom ish? Yeah, you can. There's only one okay. bedroom. Bedroom. There's only one bedroom. The other bedroom so... has been converted to an office. Okay. So the well, both would be good. So let's go to the office first and look for anything pertaining to Book of Nod and its heritage. Okay. So uh, give me a perception plus investigation. That's gonna be five. And Ryan, you are collecting goods? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have to do this on my own. Oh, um, just to make sure, I have gloves, right? Uh, yeah. Alright. Okay. Um, so you start searching around. Uh, and you do find, while you're searching through the office, you do find a cabinet which has a uh, sawn-off semi-automatic shotgun. Hmm. Uh, I'll take that. <laughs> Ryan just comes in. I'll grab that. Uh, it is illegal, but obviously Ryan's already an illegal yeah, immigrant, I'm so... Sure it, any gun he has is illegal. Yeah. 
My existence is illegal. It's ah. true, it is. Um, let's see. Donald Trump can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, looking through, like, his notes and things, um, you can find he does definitely seem to be a art dealer. So this dealer. is Dennis Herodin? Is this Dennis Herodin's yeah. place? Okay, it looks so he's like an it. art dealer. You don't find any traces of, like, sunproofing here. So okay. he, he definitely seems to be mortal, human of some kind. Um, you do find business notes, nothing that really interests you per se, but it does confirm what his business is. It does look like he is taking... Um, property, you know, stolen property, fencing it. Okay. Um, there's nothing that you can see here directly about your item, though. Can I take a quick look in the bedroom? Um, yes. So in here, it's a bunch oh, of... Oh, Ryan's using celerity to ferret paintings <laughs> down into the trunk of the car. Uh, yeah, it looks like a nice bedroom, but again, um... There's really nothing. Yeah, the oh. most... The most important fact probably in the bedroom is that it's not sunproofed in any way. All right. So, okay. So probably not a vampire. So. Um, okay. And is there any place else that is even remotely worth checkable? Not, um, really? not really. Okay. So he's got nothing here. So I'm probably left with leaving him a phone message, <laughs> but it might be a little suspicious. Probably right? not immediately afterwards. No. no. Not, not from his apartment. So why? <laughs> I bet you're wondering where I'm calling you from. Oh, by the way, um, <laughs> are you gonna like maybe spray paint some threatening masks? I, I don't know. <laughs> Give us the book, Hedgen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, we shall. Um, we shall take our stolen goods. <laughs> And leave quickly before... The well, he's a fence, so maybe he'll take... Oh, that's probably not a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. This looks like my painting. And my chair, yeah, yeah. you bastard. As I bring it back to him. Yeah, so you think you can offload these for me? Um, yeah, so as you're finishing up, like... <laughs> Terry texts you, like, when you guys come down with, like, the low, he's like, mm -hmm. we need to get the fuck out of here. So, like, okay. people are calling the cops. Okay, so let's do that. Um, and he's like, I love the report. A luxury vehicle. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I am going to need to change the license plates. <laughs> the, I'm going to need to respray paint this. Uh huh. Repaint. Okay. Well, it could be done, Terry. It's not like we haven't done it before. It's like, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's very annoying. Okay. He's like, actually, I have faith in you, Terry. at this point, I mean, it's still registered to you. You're probably going to have to report it stolen. <laughs> Yeah. And just get a new car. That is true. That is true. We should probably, so he'll, I'll have him take it out and, like, gut it. Yeah. Somewhere. Um, yeah, he drops you off uh, back at the house. And t we take all the valuables out of the trunk. He'll go back and, and gut yeah. the car. And, uh, yeah. So he's got some work to do. He's got something to do for the next day. He's like, you're going to have to get a new electric car, and then you're going to have to install all the security features again. Yeah, so. yeah. All right. If we can, you know, figure out how to sell some of these paintings. <laughs> <laughs> that might defray some of the costs. That'll defray some of the costs. I'll have to use a different fence than Dennis. Yeah, you're I'll welcome. But, yeah. All right. All right. So as he's uh, heading back, though, to drop you guys off, everyone give me perception plus alertness rolls again. All right, that's four. Six. Four. Oh, see, this is what happens when boys, you know, live together in their, in their <laughs> front house. They get up to these types of shenanigans. Well, crime. All right, so Stephen and Ryan, you guys both notice the same car that was following you before mm -hmm. uh, has picked you up again as you're pulling away. Hmm. Is this like the car that was in front of Modius's no, house? No, this is a no, completely new one. Completely different car. So alert Terry. Yeah. He's like, well... Can I get a license number on that yeah. vehicle? Yeah. Okay. Um, he asked if you want him to just lose them, or if you want him to... We want to confront them? To confront them, yeah, basically. We do have that sawn off shotgun now. <laughs> That's true. And all of your other guns. <laughs> and all of our other guns. 
I don't know. How brave are you fellows feeling? We're on a high. <laughs> That's the true. Lar- I feel great. <laughs> we are on the high from the petty larceny. Let's fuck some guys um, up. <laughs> do you want to have like a showdown with the guys following us? Well, that I would much rather not. That would be quite the public debut. Mm-hmm. Alright. Terry says I, he could use them for uh, our like an abandoned area. Them. So, um, like, Terry can drive to an abandoned area and we can jump them. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm up for that. <laughs> Ryan's, all up. Ryan's, like, just feeling frisky <laughs> since the whole Lucy thing has started. <laughs> you got a girlfriend? You got a painting? <laughs> I gotta imagine, David, is at least one of these paintings gonna end up on the wall in your room? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, Uh, yeah. That's where it's gonna be stored until you can find some place to sell it. It's this shitty little child's room and there's all this Edwardian era (laughs) furniture (laughs) antiques. Like, from floor to ceiling, it's just like one painting. It's in wallpaper now. Nice. Part of, uh, you know, part of my British heritage, so. Uh, Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, all right. Yeah. All right, so yeah, Terry will drive off. He drives back into Gary. He drives into, like, the wasteland area. Um, and basically heads down what he knows is basically a street that has become impassable. Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of ducks off into an alley, waits for them to follow, and then pulls out behind okay. so that you're trapping them, essentially. Okay. And we have reinforced doors and things like that. Right? Yes. Okay. So we can use them as yeah. shields. Okay. And you may as well shoot up the car because <laughs> it's... Uh... I will give them... That might be a humanity issue. Um. <laughs> yeah, on the way, uh, Terry called in that the to report it's stolen to get it. To get the record. Oh, yeah. No, our uh-huh. car needs to be shot up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, by all means. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that we would yeah. start slaying bullets into the other So car. as soon as um, the like it starts, like Terry basically pops out. He opens up the car door, takes cover behind it with his gun. As do I. How about the other two? Are you cowering in the back seat? Yep. So Terry and Stephen have popped I'll out and taken cover. What are you guys doing? I'll hop out, take cover. Okay. Ryan? Do so yeah. further away than them. Well, you got ter- Well, I was going to say, depending if you're in the back seats, it's four door. Yeah. So we there are in the two passenger seats, and then you guys are in. You the... guys would have like the rear passenger. Yeah. Uh, rear passenger doors. To hide behind. I'm fine. Okay. Just don't shoot Terry um, in the back. <laughs> I know this is a tense moment, but I'll have to go for just as sexy as the toilet. Sorry. All right. <laughs> that T. He's getting excited. <laughs> well, we gotta wait for Ryan to be back. This is his shit. <laughs> I don't know why we're doing this other than my aunt, I guess. <laughs> You're riding the high. I guess. Of <laughs> this random guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when boys live together. Yeah. It's a big problem. See, now you're wishing you stayed with Alicia and Lucy. <laughs> No, no, I don't. Like, Jonathan's no, like, still I better. actually unironically prefer this kind of trouble <laughs> as he sits behind the reinforced car door with a gun. All right. They, at least they aren't trying to fucking blood bone me. I am not going to have sex with a woman. I prefer <laughs> this. <laughs> okay. This is, uh, this is insane. This has turned into a bit of a mess, hasn't it? Yeah, well, it happens. Actually, when I was planning for this session, I thought, you know, there are some ways that this could go off the hook. This wasn't one of them. Ah. Uh, this it was actually probably the least off the hook Well, you the were the one way. Lay, egging me on. You can go to an abandoned area. Yeah. I mean, you can. You're just waiting. You're just waiting to, like, kill me. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm going to wait a few days before I call and leave a message for Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I feel like... It's if it's just, the day? I feel like it's, yeah. It's, it's already, like, well, I guess maybe he's not expecting you to this quick. It is the same day he sent you yeah. the note. Someone broke into his house. <laughs> Stole his shit. Well, I don't know that he sent it to me. That's what I'm afraid to leave the message and, and, and say myself. Because he'd be like, who the hell are you? Why do you have my book? Yeah. That's that was true. supposed to go to so-and-so. What did you okay. do? Like, okay, sorry about that. What did no, you do? I broke into your fucking <laughs> house, bitch. What are you going to do about it? I stole all your paintings. <laughs> if you want to see your art again, give me that book. <laughs> So David's back. I would love to do it. <laughs> All right. So Ryan, do you have um, which gun are you using? The new shotgun or the Deagle? So um, let's see. Is the shotgun loaded? Uh, yeah. Well, um, I mean, it's not it's not a very long range weapon, is it? A sawed off shotgun. No, it's really more close. It's gonna spray. Um, yeah, it's a closer range. Uh, sawn off you're... reduces the range as well. And since you're behind us, I would suggest you don't. <laughs> so I suppose um, I would hide in the car, duck in the car, and obfuscate ah. before getting out and retreating to a like kind of sniper position. Like sneak around, get an angle on them. Yeah. All right. So flank them. Actually, that would be good. All right. So that way, um, since I'm flanking them, I guess that way they they might want to break off and head for me, and that's when I go close range and switch to the shotgun. All right. So uh, yeah, these can guys. I, by the way, can I uh, prepare celerity? Um, yes, you can. Well, I will as well. All right. So uh, you guys, these guys pop out of the car, and they uh, they basically assume the same position that you do. Um, and they're like, they don't really know what to say. You, with your guys' aspects, you can hear them basically arguing with each other. And like, one of them's like, don't know if they spot us yet. I think they fucking spotted us, genius. <laughs> <laughs> so I will call out to them, giving them a, like, why are you following me? All right. Us. I guess there's more than just one of here. Okay. Um, give me a manipulation plus intimidation. You can uh, use strength plus intimidation if it's higher, but I bet it's no, not. No, it's four. Okay. Alright. Says, we don't know anything about you. We were hired. By who? All right, so they're kind of, you know, arguing with each other about whether or not, you know, they should tell you. And then uh, eventually one of them's like, a pair of guys. <laughs> a pair of guys? Seriously? Yeah. All right. Um... <laughs> I don't even know how to respond. I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is the car that's been following Jonathan since the start, right? No. It's a different car. Oh, I thought you said it was the same car. Nope. Alright then. I don't care how much they're paying, you ain't worth it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, is it so I'm um, so are you hunters? Hunter hunt what? We were hired. I'm looking over at Terry, because I'm like a pair of guys. What pair of guys? I don't know. One of them called himself Sales. Do I know Sales? So, are, are you planning on killing us? What, why are you following us? <laughs> we were just hired to follow you. Guy said he wanted to know where you went back to. Well, we went here. You found where we went to, and we found them off. Yeah, fuck off. All right. So, uh, again, don't know what to do here. <laughs> um. 
stable. You know, we could just tell them we're calling the police. So, yeah, I guess we're not going to, like, just shoot them up. Um, so. Um, we're telling them to put up where we will shoot. Yeah, but no, we've got them if locked we call in, the police, so that's, the police are going to arrive. They're going to fuck off. Right. Yeah. But we don't want to be here. And then we we'll see all, all our stolen, stolen artifacts. <laughs> and is full of stolen goods right now. And is full of stolen goods right now. So what we're going to do. I'm not saying we actually call the police. I'm saying we tell them we are doing it. We Here's what to do we're going to do. We're going to swap cars. <laughs> so, why? Because we're going to. <laughs> All right. They eventually... They kind of argue between themselves. They're like, we're basically screwed. Like, we're trapped in there. There are more of them. So how many How many of these goons are there? There are two of them. There are two of them? Okay, so I'm going to dominate if I can. All right. Uh, um, each of them. Yeah, they're not looking. Should I? Okay, if you're doing it to each of them, that's fine. Okay. So I'm going to dominate them that they've stolen this car. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not oh, looking. They're not looking at no. my eyes. Oh, so I can't get. Yeah, they're they're still over by theirs. Well, that's what I want to. Yeah. So as we're swapping cars and I'm like, you will put down your guns and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. This is how you escape with your lives, fellas. Yeah. Um, so they're going to come out unarmed and then I'm going to dominate them to be the people that stole our car. <laughs> um. Um, yeah, they, they actually, you know, they avoid looking into your eyes. Oh, so they know this. Interesting. For some reason, my plan won't work then. I was going to have them take the car out and destroy it. Mm-hmm. And then we would have their car. But they won't look in my eyes, so I don't know how this will work then. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. All right. <laughs> Oh, and are you transferring the goods? Well, I think we would need to. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously, we would need to. So, I mean, and, like, if these guys are mortal, you can just make them redundant, right? They're avoiding looking in her eyes. That, yeah, I can't dominate. Yeah. I can't look in my eyes. Can I zip tie them? Can we incapacitate them? Um, yeah, probably. I mean, with Ryan right behind them, you know obfuscated and celeritied up, probably. Okay. So let's do that. And we'll, um, we'll I got my zip ties. We can tie them up at least. I just don't want them following us anymore. Yeah. Um. Um. So, yeah. So if we can incapacitate them, do we have to do a fight to do that? Or what do we do? Um, yeah, if uh, you give a signal, um, Ryan can is in a position to take him out. Otherwise, okay. the rest of you are at a distance. Okay, so I will give the signal, Ryan, to clunk some heads together. Well, I will do so. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Give me a uh, dexterity, well, yeah, dexterity plus brawl. You can use melee if you want to, like, clunk them on the head with your gun. Your gun. Seven. Okay. Okay. And what is your uh, strength plus one? And then you've got one dot potence as well. Five. Okay. Just glad Ryan didn't have a steak for this. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, you 
basically break up, use skate, use celerity, go over, clunk them both on the head. One of them goes completely unconscious. The other one um, is just kind of knocked, um, not knocked unconscious, just kind of gets hit a little bit. But he basically surrenders. He's knocked out of cover. You're right on him with a shotgun. And uh, you've Stop got resisting. everyone else pointing guns at you. So, so cool. he surrenders. All right, so we'll zip tie him. Okay. Leave him in a corner. All right. Um. Hmm. I don't know. What do you guys want to do? You want to leave? You want to take their car? You want to? What do we want to do? Do we want to? Probably erase their memories. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. And, uh, so what is your wits plus subterfuge? My wits plus subterfuge is four. And are you asking them any questions when you're dominating them, or are you just... Yeah, I'm um, going to see if they if they know anything more than about... Okay. Um, what is your manipulation plus leadership? That is seven. Okay. So, yeah, what are you asking them, dominated... So why um, same questions I did before? Why they're following us? Who yeah. hired them? Yeah. So they were hired by um, a pair of guys. Um, they know it's two guys because they um, they were basically contacted by telephone, um, and it's two different guys who have answered the phone when they were told to call in. Okay. And what's that phone number? Um, he gives it to you. Okay. It's not the same phone number I have. No, it is not. <laughs> All right. All right, and one of them's named Sales. Don't know what the other one is. Yeah, and and they needed to find out where we went to. Why? Um, he doesn't know. He was just trying to figure out where you guys where you guys were staying, for some reason. Hmm. And he told you not to look in the other explicit instruction they were given was not to look in your eyes. All right. Okay. So do we want to plant some of the evidence on these guys and then call I mean, them out? Giving the car is planting evidence, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty evidence planty. So I don't we can... think we need to do any more, to be honest. Okay. Considering these guys are quite clearly criminals, they were hired to follow us. I don't suppose it would I would feel bad about them being sent to jail or anything no they do definitely seem um and when you check like the car that they're in there's like you know criminal paraphernalia you know they've got like guns with okay. um serial numbers scratched off they've got you know all right so if we call the cops and they okay yeah, fuck and, them. And fuck these them. Guys, then, they've got drug paraphernalia then they're taken care of right. yeah so we can do that okay i would not call for humanity rolls based on the fact that it seems like these guys have probably done some criminal activity in the past. All right. So we'll just leave him here, call the police, and have them picked up. Well, are you going to call the police, or are you going to leave them? Because they're zip-tied right now. Like, how are you going to explain that? Well, can I remove their memories? Um, yeah. And then so can... what, what memories are you... What do they remember happening? I don't know. What do they remember happening? And are you going to are you going basically to leave them tied up to the police, or are you going to basically going plant like evidence on them and send them running, essentially? So they remember trying to break into that guy's house. Yeah, I was going to say, we could frame them for breaking into the guy's house. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, just do that. Why not? Okay. Okay. So we can plant. We we won't necessarily give him. You might have to give up one of your paintings. No. So that they would have, you know, evidence of well, because they don't have anything on them. The car is evidence. Your, your description, absolutely. The car is. Oh, described. of the of the. Yeah, they've got oh, the license plate oh, okay. number. They've so, got everything. So we do swap cars, is what you're saying. Okay. 
So, okay, so let's swap cars and get everything out of the uh, luxury vehicle, and then these guys will be in it, and, we're, and I explain to them that they have uh, van or, uh, burglarized this man's apartment mm -hmm. and gotten rid of the goods. Okay. And, uh, okay. All right. Sorted. So, yeah, if you... Um... Do that, then they will basically leave as soon as okay. they, they get the option. All right. There you go. Have fun, boys. <laughs> I'd invite you back to my house, but it's getting kind of crowded. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you've got their uh, beat shitty, up. We, I got their shitty, shitty pinto. Uh, it's like a... Uh, <laughs> what the fuck was that car from... Coolimps game, the Stratus. Oh, the Ford Stratus. Try the Ford Stratus. Oh, God. Are there flames on it? Are there crappily painted flames on this car? No, but it is. But, no, but I can is. use my crafts to maybe put some on. Yeah, if you want right. to. It's got a thing like there are like bumps in it from where like it did car it win, accidents. Did it win the, uh, yeah. Win the, yeah. <laughs> no, it came in like second. <laughs> One of the doors is, like, painted, but it's not with, like, car paint. It's, like, with the regular paint, and it mm -hmm. looks off, and it's so mm -hmm. obvious. All right. Well, this is beautiful. What does Terry think of the handling? Uh, <laughs> is he grumbling? Not good. Is we he grumbling to, at me? We need to get rid of this. <laughs> All righty. All right. Well, I guess uh, we'll head home and <laughs> I'll allow Terry to deal with the I like but it, now you don't need to change the license plates or anything. Well, I said we probably should still change the license plates for this car. Well, unless I, we're going to get rid of it. I, I don't know. I, I, He's like you'll figure it out. I'll deal with it. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. All right. So, well, that was fun. Um have we wasted most of our evening now? Yeah, it is near morning at yeah. this point. So, let's go. You mean wasted? Yeah, it's not a waste, obviously. <laughs> Why is back there amidst paintings? What do you <laughs> mean wasted? Paintings. We've got a name, sales. Yeah. Uh -huh. A name and a we phone number. We got two number. things. We have a phone number. We've got a new car. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be David's. Well, can Terry teach teach Ryan how to drive? Yeah, I mean you could teach Ryan how to drive. And then this could be your car, Ryan. Sure. We would paint flames on the side. Actually, it's not bad that you got another car, because when Jonathan's lost his vehicle, Lucy took that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys have, like, the one car. All right. So you guys make it back to the Haven, um, and everyone takes off a blood point. It is daytime at this point. All right, you guys wake up the next evening, and I will wait for Mary to get back. We can continue. <laughs> what a fucking mess. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> this was a fantastic heist. You guys have gotten all of the uh, the furniture up into... Ryan's room. Just big old Union Jack on the wall. Shitty interior door with like a thousand locks on it. <laughs> Water bed. And all this antique furniture. What's there oh, to me joining you, Stephen? Uh, what was that, Miles? I'm asking, was there any point in me coming along for this? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I don't think Nonsense. absolutely nothing. <laughs> Nonsense. Of you course. had fun though. All right. So you guys went to sleep for the day. Wake up. Lose your blood point. Uh, so what are you guys doing now? Feed. Well, I think Ryan's decorating his room, right? <laughs> well, you've already done that. Oh, okay. I, I thought you might be concerned with any of the leads you've gotten. <laughs> Well, you know, I might be down. Were there any? I might take at least one of the paintings. 
If I can. <laughs> For God's sake, we will deal with the paintings <laughs> later. Let's finish the story. Now that's the most interesting part of this so far. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm still. I still feel it's too soon to call dead. <laughs> yeah. But maybe I'll. Uh, but maybe I'll give that other from the burner phone. Give that other phone. Number. All right, and Jonathan. You said you wanted to feed. Yep. All right. Well, uh, Terry's willing to take you out, but he suggests that you should probably wait until everyone goes out for security reasons, especially if there are apparently people trying to follow and attack you guys. Was rather than one person going off on their own. So was Terry able to um, at all change the stratus? Yeah, he pulled off the license plate and he did kind of a quick respray for mm -hmm. part of it. He did that all during the day. Okay. He's got all the equipment to do it in the garage, so. Okay, good. Um, he is pretty tired at this point because he stayed up most of the day. Um, all right. But, yeah. All right. Um, okay, so I'll, uh, I'll give this phone number a call. Okay. Alright, so it's basically the same thing as with Hedron. It's the, just a number that immediately dials into a, um, an answering machine. Hadrian. Adrian, Adrian, whatever. Yeah. Adrian. You keep calling it Adrian. I don't think it's somebody that's... Okay. Well, this time I will leave a message. Okay. And, um, I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> a threatening message, or...? Like, uh, your goons are, um, you know... What are, uh, I don't know. Yeah, something semi-threatening. Leave me alone. I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't know. What do you say? What when you call when you call a message line? What do you say when you're leaving a threatening message for <laughs> sales? Who is sending goons after you? Um. What? Well, what's the message we're trying to say? Like to back off and not not bother us? Or do we want to try and meet this guy and see what we want? He's probably a hunter, though. Is what I'm thinking. It seems like if he's trying to find your haven. Yeah. <laughs> it seems that way. So. So I think, like, if we find out who you were, you know, you're going to be cooked and dead and blah, blah, blah. So, so I know you're, I know you're after me, that kind of a thing. Like, I'm right. aware of you. I don't know who prepared. you are or what you want, but I do know <laughs> something, something, taking reference. <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't know, do we want to call them at all? Sort of a thing, I don't know. Or do I just, or do I, I just think hang it's, I think... Sorry, just to clarify, we're talking about the guy who sent those two goons after us, right? Right, yes. the guy who sent the two goons. Do I leave? Do okay, I just hang out? Okay, then I'm leave? pretty sure. I mean, I'm pretty sure then he already knows we figured him out because either they'll report back to him that we. Well, they won't report them, shit because they've been dominated and run off <laughs> with the. Uh... They won't report back to him at all, so he still knows. Yeah. yeah so true. I don't think there's any point. Because okay. all we have to gain from calling him is the chance that we might get traced back. True. Can I do any sort of tracery on these phone numbers? I'm sure they're burner cells yes, as well. Yes, you can do that. If I can. Yeah. Um, I will do that. All right. Um... Yeah, so a, um, a quick search of the number actually reveals that it is, um, it is actually listed to an address. Hmm. The sales guy? Is his name actually the sales? If I do you don't see that. All you see is, it's not in the phone book or anything, you just look it up, basically, online. It's on an address, so I got an address for this phone number as well. But it does have an address, which is to kind of a, kind of a not-so-great place, Sort of on between Gary and Chicago. Huh. It's not like Gary bad, but it's sort of a low rent suburb. Well, I will uh, note that. Right. <laughs> Time to break in here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got idea for more petty larceny? Time to break in. So, um, 
So yeah. So I'll go up and ask the guys if they want to go on a ride again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right. I don't know if there'll be any paintings this time, Ryan. There might be. There might be. All right. So you guys heading out again? All right. So yeah, I guess so. All right. Okay. So you head out to the apartment. Uh, does Jonathan need to feed? Oh, well, that's true. That first. Yeah. I would like to. Yeah. All right. Where are you guys gonna go to feed? I don't know. Is the bookstore open? Or purgatory? Um, it is, but yeah, purgatory will probably be the easier place to feed. Yeah, I can go in there and find someone, I'm sure. Okay. I don't know. Is this eating into our drug business time? It is, yeah. Oh, God. But you did make profit well, wait, off I of the I was going to say, wait, don't I have that theft. other guy? That, that, that guy from the computer? Yeah, store? you could. You haven't talked to him about it yet, but if you wanted to do that, it could. Say, he's going to need to He's gonna need to take over Ryan's job. It could start to take some of the pressure yeah. off of Ryan, yes. Okay. That's definitely what we need to do today. All right. So, in that case, uh, yeah. So, you head out to Club Purgatory. Yeah. And uh, who all is going in to feed? I'm fine. I need to feed. Okay. So, are you just going to uh, try your old seduction routine, Jonathan? That was a plan, yeah. Okay. Uh, in that case, give me your, what was it? It was appearance plus empathy. If that's the case, it's seven with a specialty. I can't remember if it was appearance or charisma, but I do remember that you have the same uh, in both. Yeah, I have five in both. All right. So you go about uh, trying to entrance a young woman. And you uh, do eventually uh, find one who seems to be relatively inebriated. You ply her with your presence, and uh, she consents to, you know, go into the bathroom with you for a, uh, for a little bit. All right, I'll take two blood points. Okay. So you start to feel uh, a little bit, she was pretty drunk, so you do start to feel a little bit buzzed, but with only two blood points, it's not too bad. Uh, you said mildly inebriated, right? Uh, she was heavily inebriated. You're only mildly inebriated. Okay. As long as it doesn't affect me yeah. too bad, I suppose it, it's fine. It's affecting you a little bit. It's like, you know, maybe like two or three beers in, basically. Okay, so just I, as long as I don't drive, it's fine. Yeah. All right, and Ryan, how are you going to handle this? Well, Would you like some help, perhaps? Yeah, could Jonathan help? Uh, he's busy getting his own vessel to feed from, so... Oh, okay. Sorry. I got drugs, right? Yeah. I will use them as an offering to lure in these All right. people. Uh, okay. <laughs> Please me... role play that. Give me a manipulation. Do you want to see that? Give me a manipulation plus a uh, subterfuge. Four. All right. All right. You have a dot of herd as well, right? What? You have a dot of herd as well, right? Yes. All right, yeah. So you find one of the uh, regular uh, addicts that you feed from, and uh, you give them a little bit, and you uh, feed off them in turn. So uh, it Could is... Could I possibly feed off them first? Um, you don't really have the option to do that. They want the drugs, like, immediately before any, you know, sexy stuff goes on. Yeah, okay, fair. I am right. pretty ugly. So uh, you do feed. Uh, you get a pretty strong... How many points do you take? How many will get me? Uh, 
Hello? Um, what was that, David? You kind of cut out. I said, I said, how many blood points will get me, you know, Fucked up. under the influence? Um, yeah. Well, it, I mean, you're going to get a little bit affected by it at one blood point, and, you know, the more you take, the longer it'll last. Um, I can look up the effects for... Uh, you may actually want to get fucked up before you do this. I can look up the effects of meth for you. Why would I want to get fucked up? Actually, really meth... <laughs> take on sales. Meth actually gives you a free dot of celerity. Are you serious? Yeah, I am. Why? Uh, because you're if you because you're on speed. It pushes your. It's a stimulant. It pushes your uh, body. Okay. <laughs> drugs are actually good sometimes, David. Drugs, drugs, drugs. All are good. All are good. I know you're Catholic, David. So obviously, IRL. Well, I'll take like three or four. Uh, four will four? probably be hospitalization range. Three, he'll still be fine. All right, I'll take three. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how long it lasts. Uh, I don't want to look it up. I'll just say for this next scene, you have the uh, the benefit of your meth uh, celerity point. Basically. Um, Given the fact that we've house-ruled celerity a little bit, uh, the way I run it is um, whenever you spend blood points to get celerity, you get a free point of meth celerity every time you use it. So if you spend one blood point, basically you get two extra turns while you're on it. Cool. Cool. All right. <laughs> so these guys get back in the car. Jonathan's a little bit tipsy, and Ryan is methed up and ready to go. <laughs> Oh, I'm good to go, like, Stephen. Let's and do Steve, this. Steve Stephen, what did you expect you know, would happen again. when you took us to a nightclub? Just... <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I mean, his herd is addicts, so he, he's kind No, of... I've seen Ryan like this. Before. Yeah, he gets... Yeah, I expected more out of Jonathan, but, you know... I... <laughs> he's not drunk. He's he's a couple oh, okay. beers in, basically. Oh, all right. That's... He's he's maybe two, three glasses of wine, basically. All right. Well, we're in good condition to go. <laughs> he feels better about this. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's wonderful. Not like I'll be useful for anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys drive out to the uh, to the house. And you find it looks like it's pretty abandoned. Like there's grass growing, and it's really like tall. No one's mowed it in a while. There are weeds. Um, this is not such a nice neighborhood. Um, it looks like a lot of low rent housing. Um, yeah. All right. So I will off that and see if there are any moving okay. creatures around. Okay. Uh, what's your perception plus empathy? And Ryan, what did you say? Nothing. Okay. Yeah, you don't spot any auras in the house. <laughs> then I don't know what to do because the whole point in coming here was to confront sales. But I guess we'll go check Time out. to break the fuck I in. Guess, hey, I don't think... break in. Yeah, oh yeah, we're coming here to meet him. Oh no, I guess no one's home. We'll just have to bust in and steal all his shit. Oh, I get oops. out to, I, 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 you know, can I get, do I have a new pocket knife or do I still have my melted one? <laughs> it's still a little melty, yeah. <laughs> I'll go take care of the power. <laughs> so are you going to, um, you guys are going to break in? What else yeah. are you doing here? Alright. Same. Should I stay on guard duty or something? Because I won't be able to help you in there. Alright. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, we have a gun. Yeah, but realistically, what can I do with it? 
this? My roll is four. I don't care. You could keep... Yeah, I mean, it's a good idea to I'm have close. a lookout, especially a lookout who has auspects. It's not a bad idea. I mean, it's just ten blows. I'm the lookout. Right. Well, that's fine. Ryan and I will go with All right. and see what we can find. All right. So if Jonathan's on the lookout, then, uh, Jonathan, you know, you have a point and drive, right? What point and drive, yeah. Okay. So Terry will get out and go in with you then. Okay. Put you in the driver's seat in case you have to make a quick getaway. All right. <laughs> so I have a lot of practice hey, keeping the engine running. All right. I am spending some yours. All right. So are you going to do the same break-in method as before, basically cut the power? Well, is, are, is there a, an alarm system here? Do we need to cut the power? What, um, what, are, what are Ryan's thoughts on this? Okay, um, first off, what's the lock like this time? Yeah. So give me a um, give me a perception plus security. Seven. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the um, the locks don't look particularly impressive here. Um, in a neighborhood like this, you're not thinking there's probably going to be an alarm system, but you are dealing with hunters, so... I was going to say, there might be booby traps or something. Yeah, it could easily be booby traps, things like that. Okay, um, hmm. Have a look at what, what are the windows? Um, the windows are all, there are curtains drawn over them, and they all have, uh, burglar bars put on. Is there a basement? Um, not that you can see. If there is a basement, then there are no windows um, looking down into it. Is there a back door? Um, there is. Pretty much the same as before. The locks are about the same. Okay. Is there a dog? I'm obviously... Um, no, there's nothing like that. I saw no auras. Yeah, you don't hear so, or see me, Is this a detached, is, is this a house in a, yeah. in a housing estate? It's actually, what? it's actually like a house. Yeah, it's in a low rent suburb. Okay. Now, could these be the same guys that had the, uh, the, um, the laser net below the could be. animal man? Maybe we should just cut the power. Yeah, so uh, when you, so like, when you believe there being a backup generator, usually there is a delay between power getting cut and the generator going off. So I'll need to synchronize with you again, and uh, you'll need to cut the power. And then since we're in a hurry, I'll have to break the lock again instead of picking it. Okay. So let's see. Um, if you break in through the back door, then you guys can be basically standing looking at each other at, with the box and do it at the same time. Okay, good. And the back door is obviously better because we're not as visible on the street. Yep. So, so you through the back. Okay. Uh, there's no auras, right? None that Steven saw. Okay, fine. So we need Steven to... Uh, break the fuse, I break open the door, Terry's behind my back, i am ready. <laughs> Go in like a SWAT team. I, uh, so I push open the door from, like, the sides, Terry gives the all clear, and I wrap around with my shotgun equipped. Alright. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's this the idea, so when we open the door, once Terry doesn't see hostiles, the next thing he should check for before I step in is obviously try and that's when I step in okay so yeah that's the plan all right so you're both off to the side you're gonna check in check for traps basically that's all right yes so you jam your slagged up knife <laughs> back in there there's like another <laughs> explosion <laughs> I'm beginning to like these <laughs> uh, Ryan you've got what's your strength at right now Six. Okay. Yeah, you pop this door open, and as you do so, there is a uh, 
like a gunshot, like, BAM! So as soon as the door swings open, a shotgun blasts out, and uh, fortunately you guys are out of the way. When you check for the trap, uh, you can see there is like a wire set up to the door, rigged up to this shotgun. Hmm. All right. So if you guys okay. want to head in, uh, Ryan, give me so a hard. perception plus uh, investigation to check for traps. Further traps. Seven. Okay. Seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't see anything else past the shotgun. Alright. Alright, uh, so I've got my uh, sawed off. Yep. Equipped, and I'll step in for. I will also prep celerity. Okay. So inside, it's basically a, um, it's a small house. Uh, there is a shotgun rigged up, obviously, towards the back door. Um, there doesn't see, as you look around, there doesn't seem to be anything rigged up to the front door, which might have been kind of the main entryway for these guys. Um, there is no alarm system that you can see. There's pretty much only one bedroom, um, kitchen, and then, you know, usual house, house stuff. Um, there is no furniture in this place, aside from a single, um, like a wooden chair in front of a wooden table, and on the table is what looks to be an answering machine. Um, and uh, it looks like it's connected up to some stuff, presumably, possibly for like remote um, dialing in to get your messages. Ask if there were any messages on there, but the powers have so. Okay. Yeah, there's no way to check that right now. Um, the only other thing you notice, and it's pretty easy to notice because the house is basically stripped, um, there is one letter that has been pushed through the uh, postage slot. Right. We'll check that. All right. It is a handwritten note from a uh, on. Basically, the letterhead says it's a rental agency from a woman named Marsha Ledette. And the note reads, hope you like the house. If you need anything, give me a call. Okay. So they must not stay here. They must just come to check them. Yeah, Ryan, with his security knowledge, would recognize this as a pretty standard kind of cutout that you would use in some sort of criminal or other illicit enterprise to keep you, you know, mm -hmm. a distance. This is probably something, like, I should have, but everybody's living with me. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody <laughs> knows where my haven is. Your cutout is that Ryan has obfuscate when he sells your drugs. Yeah, something. You should get something like this, though, if you start hiring new people, though. Yes, I will, most definitely. This is obviously... Obviously, now I've got a realtor which can lead me to places like this. Um, so, score one for that. Um, all right, there's nothing else here? Nope. Uh, the letterhead does have the contact information for the, the rental agency. The rental agency, so obviously I'll need to go and contact her. Uh, probably not at midnight, though. Um, <laughs> uh, it's not quite midnight. I mean... Well... Still, it's probably around 10 or so, yeah. It's, it's after business yeah. hours. Yeah, it is. Is what I'm saying. So. So what day, I mean, are, are, what time of the year are we? Like, how late is it? Um, it is um, basically the beginning of spring, the end of winter. So it's getting dark fairly late, too. So. Yeah. All right. I'm going to be able to call her at like 6 or something. So, oh, no. Well, um, Alright, anything else? Yeah, the place seems pretty stripped. There's no basement or anything? No. Okay. Right. I guess this is it then. Well, then I guess we'll troop back to the car. Alright. Being aware of any ambush that for us in the uh, lawn. Yeah, no, Jonathan, you okay. didn't see anything basically the whole time they were inside. You did see some sparks fly in the backyard. 
um, which was Not presumably, <laughs> which was presumably them breaking in, and you heard the gunshot. Uh huh. Hmm. But yeah, they come out through the front door, no problem. Grant, uh, do we head back home then? Well, I guess all of my leads are pretty much done. Unless there's something else. Uh, is this the, will that be the end of this session then, or have you more else planned? Uh, no, Liam, if you guys, um, and the investigation here it is, although there are still leads you could follow up on. So we could go to the rental places, essentially. Yeah. That's our other lead. So we could head there. I doubt there's going to be anything, anyone there, but we could break in. <laughs> you could break in, absolutely. I well, think that's what we'll do. If there's we'll breaking in, involved, we better go. Oh. <laughs> I, think, I think we're going to break into the rental agency and look through their files is what I think we're going to do. I don't know if you guys could tell great enjoyment from applying all my research. <laughs> well, I'm sure you are. Now, this is going to be slightly different because this is going to be a commercial. It is, yes. This is going to be a commercial I, thing. I've got, se I've got separate files for that. Okay. And and we do not want them to know that we've broken into this one. So there's no Dude, blow in the power. This is... <laughs> this you can okay, be the Stratus. This needs to be like your burglary car. This is gonna be the burglary. This has car. the equipment in it. <laughs> okay. It's already known to the police. Mm -hmm. So uh so it's yeah. not registered to you. <laughs> no, it's not registered to me. So um yeah, so let's go to the uh, rental place and we're we're now the object here is to not have them know. We just wanna go in look Okay, at the well files. so that obviously that obviously completely changes the yeah, methodology I know, involved. Exactly, no more blowing out the power and busting open. The <laughs> also, door. your knife is getting down to like the nub. Uh, yeah, it's like, and I can't. And, and I show you my knife, and I'm like, I can't, I can't disarm another power. Uh, <laughs> disarm. <laughs> That's, it almost disarmed me. All right. I mean, like you know, any length of metal will do. You could bring a butter knife next time if you I'm want. I'm sure we got a screwdriver in the yeah. car that would work as well, so. But still, we can't go that route. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. As we're discussing, I love that our discussions on the way over is, <laughs> how are we going to break into this place? <laughs> Alright, yeah, so you arrive at the, uh, the rental agency. Is it open or is it closed um it looks like it's um closed but there are like lights on it looks like uh someone is working late there okay that that's because that that's pretty much the only way i could think of for this place okay all right like so basically we are going to have to stake the place out and wait for lockup and then do something with the person <laughs> okay or I could, I was going to say, that's what I want to know, like, who, is it as a janitor? Is it somebody um, who's It looks late? like there is a, if you look around, there is a cleaning service van nearby, it looks okay. like, yeah. Because if it was like a worker working late, I could come up with some ruse. Yeah. And then Ryan could go in obfuscated uh, and do his thing. Um, I could still come up with some ruse to try and get the uh, cleaning person to open the door and Ryan could go in obfuscated. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. So, what will be our ruse? I don't know. Um, why would a cleaning person open the door? Hola, senor. <laughs> um, um, let's see. In all seriousness, though. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you could start a minor fire. <laughs> I could start a minor fire. We'll call that Plan B. And then call for help. Yeah. Is there? Are there? Tra is there? I'm sure there's trash around. Yeah. Um. Well, let's see. Sorry. So, is it just the van? 
um, around this area. Um, the only thing in the parking spot for the rental agency is the van right now, yeah. And your car. Okay, and fantastic. Your... All we have to do is set the alarm off on the van. Ah, oh, there you go. Is there an alarm on the van? Um, there could be. If we bump into the Well, van. I mean, unless they left it unlocked. So this will be one of the very rare instances you hope they locked their car properly. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah, so again, you're so, uh, set the alarm off on their own van, wait for them to come out, and then I'll... Obviously, and sneak in. Yep. Okay, now, Jonathan's slightly tipsy, right? Can Very you, slightly. like, bump the Stratus into the van? Oh, come on. And be like, And oh, then oh, just act sorry. like a drunk guy. And uh, and then and then like you're the drunk driver that accidentally hit the van, then the guy would have to come out. Yeah, do, do that. That's perfect. Very natural. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, Terry and I I'm will go see really the I'm really not a big fan of. I'm really not a big fan of how you're treating me. <laughs> What's your mean? I mean? I mean, come on, you're taking part. <laughs> Alright. Now hurry up and rob this guy's car. <laughs> but don't do any damage to, to our to our one vehicle. Alright, so is this the plan? <laughs> this is this actually the plan? Yeah. Alright. Uh, okay then. Alright. But right oh. now, I don't think this oh, is a good oh, idea. Oh. <laughs> Don't wreck the car. All you have to do is bump it barely no, hard enough to set is, the alarm off. This car is not registered to us. So yeah. do you wish to exchange information? Uh, we might have I issue. guess we just beat him to death. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have sorry, to pay it. Sorry. Jonathan, you're going to have to pay believe, it off. I do believe Stephen has a supernatural ability known in the vampire world as dominate. <laughs> That's true. I could just yeah, I'll, seriously. I'll now shut the fuck up and ram the car. Okay. I'll, I'll pop out. And <laughs> Bam! Go. We'll get him out there. Uh, oh, right. right. Supernatural powers. Bam! Vroom! <laughs> so I you still don't think this you is a good You smash theory. into this thing. Don't hurt the... Don't smash it. You <laughs> bump into it so that the car still runs. And... Um... So I slam down to the speed of full force. In we go. <laughs> There's no stopping me. <laughs> All right. So you, uh, I mean, you knock into this thing, and the car alarm does start to go off. And uh, after a little bit, you do see um, uh, what looks to be a sort of elderly Hispanic woman come out. And, uh, oh, you can just charm her. <laughs> what the fuck went back into me? She starts yelling at you, and she, uh, well, you speak Spanish, don't you? I do. All right. Yeah, so she starts uh, cursing at you in Spanish while occasionally, um, like, saying polite things to you in English, like, oh, are you okay? You know, stuff like that. And then she's like, man, this fucking drunk piece of shit hit the van. I know I'm going to get blamed for this. <laughs> um, and obviously, Ryan, you do have the opportunity to obfuscate and get inside. I blink inside. All right. So, Alec lavas off. All right. So, Jonathan, how are you? How are you handling right. this? I'm off for my. <laughs> what was that? Sorry, cut off. How are you handling this? She's like, "Oh, are you okay?" And then, of course, cursing you in Spanish. All right then. Uh, well, should I try to charm her? <laughs> Why not? Excuse me, madam. Have you noticed how hot I am? We <laughs> could. We can try charming her before we try literally brainwashing her. All right, sure. All right. So I'm terribly sorry about this, madam. Bad <laughs> attachment. <laughs> All right. So appearance plus empathy, which is seven, I think. Seven. Yeah. Specialty. Will PowerPoint. <laughs> no. Yeah. So you um. You entrance her, and the cursing stops, which is how you know it took effect. 
and she seems, you know, very concerned helping you. She a basically asks if you want her to, you know, call an ambulance. Ah, uh, no, no, there's no need for that. I'm perfectly fine. All right. So As you she, can see. She says there's a... <laughs> she says there's a first aid kit inside, so she offers to take you inside and basically make sure you're... Okay. Will that get you talk if you guys have enough to do what you want to do? I'm hoping so. I hope Ryan knows to go look at the files and It's short, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, sure. I'll I'll head inside. Alright. Fine. <laughs> so she takes you inside and sits you down. She's like, Alright, let me uh I should check Ray energies. Why don't you, you know, take your shirt off? <laughs> oh but of course. How very polite of you. And we'll, uh, we'll cut away to Ryan. Give me a perception uh, plus investigation. Seven. So, uh, Jonathan, are you going to attempt to uh, feed from this woman while you have her um, entranced? Uh, she doesn't seem to be inebriated or anything, right? She seems no. to be perfectly normal. In that case, I might as well, wouldn't I? Yeah. I see no reason not to. All right. So, um, yeah, Ryan, you take a little while, but you do eventually find um, the file you're looking for. You find the address, um, like, basically where the, the rent is supposed to be sent to, which should be their actual residence. Fantastic. And then... Um, yeah, and as you're leaving, you notice uh, Jonathan seems to be, like, almost completely undressed while this woman is checking him and he's <laughs> feeding from her. Nice. And I walk out. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> An invisible thing. Muy bien. Excelento. Uh, you're able to get a, a pair of blood points safely. Beautiful. All right, then. In case I will thank her so very much for her time and assure her that I'm perfectly fine, apologize for the damage to her car, and I will get out. <laughs> put your clothes back on and leave. Did I mention I put my clothes back on? <laughs> okay. I don't think I did, Zach. <laughs> Jonathan walks out in nothing but Speedos and a fedora. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stop the fedora. <laughs> it's never going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> it is your character trait, I'm afraid. Too funny. All right, so yeah, you've got the location. Okay, well, I guess um, if the if the Stratus isn't too uh, banged up, we'll pile in and go to the next location. All right. To so break in there. <laughs> so you head over, and actually, this location is not far away from the uh, from Hedrons or Herodons. Herodons. Um, apartment. It's in the same part of Chicago. Hmm. What's the situation with the building this time? I need a full description. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a second. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Muy bien. Ho, ho, ho. Let's see. The layout for this adventure is not handled very well, unfortunately. Vamos a robar una casa. <laughs> Adventura. <laughs> no más, por favor. All right, so it is a condo. Okay. It is a. It's a condo. It's part of a big set of buildings. So there's going to be a lot of people, probably at their. Mm. Yeah, around in the building okay. itself. Well, yes. yes. Okay. So now. We're going to have to be stealthy. So stealthy. that that rules out the power outage. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's okay. fine. I've got plenty more tricks Our up my sleeve. Stephen, right? does so well. Stephen, I need you to climb up the nearest uh, telephone pole and jam your your knife into the power transformer. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. But in all seriousness, let's get let's get to this. Okay. So, um, 
Uh, is does the building have a fire escape? Um. Yes, it does. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so we know what room specifically, right? Um. Yes, we, you do. We have a unit number. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and the yeah. fire escape does does run along the back of of that. Um, if you spend, you know, basically 20 minutes kind of obfuscated surveying the place, you can find out, yes, uh, it does, the fire escape does run directly along this, uh, condo. Okay, well, what's it look like from there? Windows protect and stuff, I presume, again? Uh, yeah, the windows are completely, um, basically, uh, locked up with, um, or, like, closed off with curtains. They're locked, obviously. Um, Are they bars? As you're uh, hanging out there, you notice actually someone actually peeks out and looks outside and then goes back in. So you do see there's someone inside. They don't notice you on account of the obfuscate. Do I get their face? Um, yes, you can. Alright. Might as well. Uh, it is a handsome, uh, well-reserved man with short hair and quick black eyes. He dresses conservatively and uh yeah okay um hmm. is there a building across the street that would have a view on this back window um no there is not is the window particularly high up what floor is it um it is on the top floor Okay, okay. Um, doesn't say specifically, but not too many, probably like Three, five or six. Five, okay. David has like a path of documents to yeah, follow. No, if this, like, yeah. then go to if, C yes, form A. Go here. <laughs> if no, go there. Yeah, um, so, uh, I need our, I need a read of ours from Stephen. Alright, I can read some more. Three dice, I think? Uh, four. That's some close enough to see four. Okay. Um, yes, actually. I'm not used to you. Doing well on those rolls. <laughs> Apparently, I did well. Uh, there Apparently are, I'm learning my power. There are a pair of auras inside. I see a pair of auras. They're positioning. And they are. Yeah, they seem to be uh, going from sort of a uh, violet color to a uh, sort of dark blue. They keep kind of shifting back and forth. Hmm. It's indicating that they're uh, basically excited and kind of suspicious. They seem to be in a heightened state of alert. They're aroused. What's their uh, positioning? Is one of them on the front and one of them on the back, or are they they're both at the back? They're moving all around the wall? house. They're, they're pacing, they're circling. Checking windows, it looks like they're probably checking the door. They, they seem to be expecting something. It might have something to do with... Uh... It might have something to do with the fact that we took out the And the guy. threatening message, which may or may not have been left. <laughs> <laughs> do you leave the threatening message now? <laughs> yeah. Well... That machine isn't gonna pick up. It doesn't have any power. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, they're probably real suspicious. <laughs> they probably called in. So if I had left a message, they couldn't have gotten it anyway. <laughs> uh, so we never picked up any silencers for any of our weapons, did we? Where we had to get yeah. the message from the machine. Uh, no, you do not have silencers for your weapons. Okay, so the way I see it, since they're walking right up to the window and checking it, they obviously wouldn't have uh, traps on that window. 
if the, if they did that, don't go off from them walking up to it. It would have to be like pretty fucking specific traps. So I take my chances on it. Okay. And um, I've never lived in an apartment block before. What are alarms like for individual apartments? Um, I suppose it probably varies. This is kind of a nicer place though, so they probably do have uh, yeah. alarms. It Although, like a, it like I nice would, it would be, alarms would be on when they're inside it. That's probably not. Well, you'd arm it before you go to bed. Uh, yeah, and uh, again, these are hunters. They're obviously in a state of alert, so they may have mm -hmm. turned on the alarm. Yeah. So you can assume um, it'd be a standard alarm. Any window or door opening would set it off. Yeah. Okay, um, so what we're trying to get out of this specifically, we, we don't want, just want to get rid of them, we're going to want to interrogate them as well, right? Probably, yes. Okay, then, so there's two ways we can go about it. Uh, the, the best, the most surefire way to get through it would probably actually just be to select bus through the window like especially since we've got like the R perception view we could actually shoot them from the outside even that would attract attention though with gunfire shots so yeah if I celerity though I could break in the window and probably take them uh, but then that wouldn't leave us with much time to bring them out of the apartment and stuff so uh, it's like we wouldn't have much time to interrogate them in the apartment since we attract attention and we also wouldn't be able to drag them out to the car. Right. So the more risk, the, the more risky option in the sense that we uh, have a, a higher choosing the initiative would be to uh, just try to lockpick the front, I guess. That would give us access, maybe without setting off any alarm and without creating any very large noise. Then we'd have to take them out before uh, a lot of noise was created. That's unfortunately the only things I can think of right now, unless you guys got something else. Yeah, I don't know anything else. I got nothing else. Okay, so what do you think we'll go for, guys? Bust in like the Kool-Aid man? A lockpick. Yeah, um... Yeah... I suppose busting in would have to be like... It would have to be only me. Since even if someone comes up with me on the fire escape, they would be visible if they check the window at the wrong time. So we'd have numbers on our side if we did the front door, because then we could all go in. Yeah, I'm leaning toward the front door. Okay. We just have to be careful that they don't have their own personal security camera set up somewhere on the way. Yeah. So so I'll lead the way before anyone else and check, and then you, the rest can follow me up. All right. Once I sweep it for cameras. So, right. um... I'll obfuscate as just an innocuous person. I won't have my mask or anything up because uh, if they do catch me on the camera, I don't want to be suspicious, obviously. Um, so if they, they're looking, you appear as you do on the recording of the camera, but if there's someone basically watching a camera feed and they look through the camera, they see you as your obfuscated self. It's only going back to the oh, cool. that you look different. Okay, in that case, then... I will have my uh, uh, balaclava open stuff to conceal myself, but I'll also be obfuscating as someone innocuous. Okay. So, what's your perception plus investigation? Seven. Yeah, you don't find... There are um, some security cameras in, like, the lobby and stuff, but once you're up in the upper floors, you don't see anything that looks like that. There is a uh, peephole on the door that they could look out of. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing to be aware of. 
Okay, so everyone get up on the top floor with me. Or, or like one person do the car. Will that be Jonathan or Terry? Uh, if I'm still in the car, it super would be me. So I guess Terry would be better at it. Alright. Terry will go. He's got yeah. some combat training. Alright, sure. So it's me, Steven, and Terry. Okay. Okay, so uh, Terry Steven... Terry advises you, Jonathan, before he leaves to, you know, basically keep the engine running. Yeah. <laughs> we may need Very to good. Very good. Very good. Okay, right. so um, I'll now, while I'm doing the door, okay. I, of course, will obfuscate to be invisible. Yeah. Um, are we coming up through a stairwell? Um, there is a set of elevators you can take, or there is a staircase that you can take. Fantastic. We will take the staircase. All right. We'll All right. have I will have Stephen and uh, Stephen, you Terry old man on the, the stairs. <laughs> All right. Six floors, <laughs> bitch. I can, I can loop it up. So I'll have the other two on the stairwell. Okay. Not uh, on the uh, corridor. And uh, if you know if so if they hear footsteps coming from down, they can. They can pretend to be heading down or, you know, whatever it takes to look normal. Yeah. Otherwise, just make sure one of them has eyes on me so I can give a signal when I have the door done. Okay. Okay, so now while I'm doing the door, I'll be fully invisible. All right. Dex plus security. And, uh, plus security. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have a minus one penalty for my armor, so I'll have to take the armor off. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So that is seven. All right. I will spend a willpower right. point. All right. Do you have any specialties? Uh, no. Okay. So it takes you about uh, 20 minutes or so. It's, it does seem to be like high quality locks on this thing. But after around 20 minutes, you do manage to eventually get them open. Um, and uh, yeah, you should be able to open it and head in any time. Okay, so I look to the guys and give them the signal to come up towards me. Okay. Are you still invisible? I'm invisible, yeah. Well, I'm not invisible to you, okay? <laughs> you head back in, put your shirt back on, <laughs> then turn oh, yeah, your back. Okay. Yeah, so I head back in, put my armor back on, bring you guys out with okay. me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, hide my okay. so, so see the signal. <laughs> yeah, he waves to you, but he's invisible. <laughs> so I'll have uh, Steven use Auspex to uh know when the auras aren't at the front door all right you know i already wasted my one good roll on this so i don't care i need you to do it again uh yeah you can see that their auras um are both they seem to have stopped um give me a second Yeah, so they seem to have um, stopped, and they've kind of taken up positions um, inside the room, and their auras have shifted to more like aggression. Uh-huh. I think they know we're here. Okay, yeah, they caught me. So. Fuck. Okay. You do know exactly they where they are. are in the place, though, so, so I, you can I point, point them. To, I point they definitely the caught me. Okay, Steven, mm -hmm. do you have any special equipment right now? Um, as in... Would you happen to have, say, a smoke bomb or something along such lines? Hmm, probably not on me, no. Okay. 
Terry's got his mace. Terry does have mace. Can He's also I, got a taser. Can I rig something up to... Terry, actually, he does have both mace and a taser. If someone wants to take one of those implements from him to non-lethally and silently restrain these guys. Because, I don't know, so yeah. are you guys going to be using guns or are you going to be trying to do it silently? Well, it seems trying silently. To do it silently so think. Ryan's got his quarter staff, I assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Terry's willing to hand over either the mace or the... Um, so the taser, I've got good uh, aim. I can do, I can do the taser. All right, so he hands the taser over to you. I'm going to assume it's going to be firearms. It's firearms, yeah. Very. Trying to find where my... Okay, is. so I do have, I still have two points of celerity potentially at my disposal, right? Yes. Could I get a blood point off Terry? Um, well, Terry's already tired. kind of fatigued. You're probably going to inhibit his combat abilities if you take a blood point from him. All right. That's fine. Uh, I won't need it. Okay, <laughs> There's so... just going to be a messed up Irish kid <laughs> busting in here in a balaclava uh, <laughs> with a quarter staff. Yeah, be... so basically, oh, here we go. Um, since I have two celerity, I guess I'll lead the charge and just go in through the door as fast as possible, and hopefully they won't react enough, fast enough to hit me, but they will focus on me by the time you guys actually come in, and that gives you your window to enter as well, without getting immediately shot. Alright. Okay. So, uh, that's what we'll go with, I think. Okay. So I'll just charge in there, and uh, melee whoever's uh, quickest to get at. Okay. Here's my Suddenly really glad I didn't go. Suddenly, yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys bust in. Um, you guys, um, since Stephen has already pointed out where they are with aspects, uh, you guys do have the initiative. Cool. So. All right. So, is either of them quicker for me to charge? Yeah. You don't know which one is which, <laughs> but you can go for the the nearest guy. Yeah. Yeah, go, go for them. Bang them in the head. Okay. I'm looking up their stats right now. Steven does note that it would have been handy to have a flash grenade at this point. All right. So, what is your uh, dexterity plus melee? Um, the blood increases from the previous house are gone by now, aren't they? Yes. Okay, so strength plus melee is seven with a specialty. Uh, dexterity plus melee. Seven with a specialty. Okay. Okay. And then, um, what is your strength? Plus three. Seven. Okay. Holy shit. That's either really good or really bad. It's good. I hope so. All right. So you run up to the first guy you see, and you just wallop him with this quarterstaff. Like, he does not know what's going on. Um, he instantly basically just gets, you smack him with it, he hits the back wall, hits his head against it, and he just goes unconscious. Um, and you still have actually, like, two turns left. I go for the other guy, and I should probably be saying that I'm trying not to kill. Yes. Um, we'll All right, have... so... I'm, I'm already this time, planning on doing the self-control roll as soon as we're finished with the combat. <laughs> okay. Um, this time, my attack will go for their arm. Okay. 
<laughs> not their head. All right. I, I did a, just a regular, like, torso attack before. Yeah, that's fine. And what was your strength plus three again? Seven. Holy shit. So this guy, um, he does not get immediately knocked unconscious, but he does get basically, uh, like, jammed in the ribs with this thing. And he is uh, basically kind of like, he gets the wind knocked out of He's him. He's stunned. He is still up and fighting, though. Um, Terry is probably the one who would come in next. And he starts so basically... Do I have my third move, or did you to take that? I, I assumed you, you just would continue to hit him. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So Terry runs in afterwards. He starts, like, macing this guy in the face. Um, so he is injured, maced, like, weeping, and you come in now. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't Hayes, stride. Hayes, don't put him out of his misery. <laughs> Motherfucker, <Hayes>. Hayes. <laughs> Yes. I just slowly come in. Dog the bounty hunter Man. over here. If you guys were police officers and this was a black guy, we would have the makings for a very uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, well publicized case uh, case of police brutality. He was armed and dangerous. I'm assuming Weird. with these white men though, so there's no police brutality here. That's true. Um, well, there is, actually. No, there's legitimate police brutality <laughs> now. You guys would get in trouble for this if oh, you were cops. That's true. <laughs> um, but we're not cops. So, let us, um, I guess we will incapacitate these guys. You gonna and, tase them? And, uh, yeah, I, sure, I'll tase them. Alright, dex plus firearm. Fire. Yeah, tase. Uh, five. Alright. Hey, hey. He's on maze. Right, yeah. It's like maze. So he is maced. He's got the wind knocked out of him. You tase him. Um, he goes down, yeah. Okay. Between all of you. The other guy is completely unconscious. Uh, Ryan, what is your self-control? Four. All right. I will say your difficulty is very high on this on account of... Uh, the math. The math. Uh, the... Maybe I need to re recharge the taser. <laughs> um, so I'm gathering the coils. Uh, if you want to spend a willpower point on this, Ready I'm just advising you. It's a it is a very high difficulty before I roll. Okay. Are Ryan. you interested? Yes. No. Oh. Willpower. Sorry. I couldn't tell if you were talking to me or Mary. No, I was. I'm saying the difficulty is very high. I thought you can't spend. Uh, I thought you can't spend willpower on virtue rolls. Can you not? I don't remember. I thought you said something like that too. Did I? All right, never mind. Yeah. Well, you definitely can't spend it when it's a roll to determine if you lose humanity. Yeah, you can't spend it on a conscience roll. All right. In that case, yeah, just fuck you then. Hopefully, you'll get tens. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. All right, so Terry and I are, are ready to... So, yeah, immediately Ryan uh, jumps up on top of this guy and okay. starts just ripping into him for blood. Okay. okay, so we're both, Terry and I are both doing whatever we can to hold Ryan back. All right. Um, it does take a turn for you to, like, put your taser back in, basically, if you want to do that. I don't know. How are you going to try and hold him back? Um, well, between Terry and I, how strong are we? Um, you have steaks, uh, steaks, right? I do have steaks, yes. So you should you probably just that. stake me. Because that's going to take a turn to get... Well, I'm going to have Terry do that. How strong is Terry? Is Terry like... He's, like, um, he's fairly strong. Because he's probably stronger than me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 
This is the problem when you're a combat guy is the guy most prone to going crazy. Well, Steven, you could spend blood to boost yourself. Well, he's that's going to take me a turn as well. Uh, you can do it on the same turn that you use okay. it. Um, he's got. He's going to have a three on his yeah, uh, I attack have roll. A three as well. So. Although you could, you have the blood to spend to boost it if you wish to. That is spending blood. Oh. <laughs> it's dex plus uh, melee. So yeah, well, I guess it'd be four. If I spend a blood point. It's up to you. So. I'll do it. Okay, I'll do a blood point and. Stake me, bro. And and I will stake my friend Ryan. Okay. And then, what is your strength? Is two. Right. Okay. Uh, Ryan, you take no damage. <laughs> the stake just kind of bounces off of you. Um, wow. Do I at you... least get his attention? Uh, not really. He's pretty fo- you do- he does eventually regain himself, mm -hmm. but, like, you guys just really- I mean, he's got potence, he's- Okay. We just couldn't do anything. This guy, yeah, you absolutely drain one of the two hunters before they're able to get you back under control. How much blood do I get, though? You're brought up to full, basically. Um, and what is Good. your current humanity? Five. All right. Uh, what is your conscience? One. All right. All right. Well, I'm sorry to say you have lost uh, a point of... Wait, didn't you get a humanity boost in the last... I did. Hey, was it four? Yeah. All right, you're back down yeah, to four. back down to four. Good golly, you're all not right. a person at all. Nothing lost, nothing gained. Yeah, pretty much. All really right. glad I didn't come along. <laughs> Drew neutral, that's what they call me. Yep. All right, we're going to start having some... As I uh, drain this man's life's blood. <laughs> oh, and bear in mind um, that while your, your virtue, like your courage and stuff, is still 10, um, in case you increase your humanity, it remains... Or it is still 5 in case you increase your humanity, but while your humanity is at four, you can no longer roll a virtue higher than four. So your courage is now down to four. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'll bring it back. You're going to be Salvation through works. Soon. I'll bring it back. Don't worry, I got this. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Listen, this... This Here, isn't murder, it's manslaughter. I'm stake you and stick you in the closet with the Edwardian paintings, all right? <laughs> and with that other guy that's still in our basement. <laughs> yeah. It's that other guy. In our basement. Remember the guy you staked system. in your prelude? Do I have a guy that he's I still staked there. in the prelude? You staked the guy in the prelude. Yeah, he's still there. It's hilarious. <laughs> I don't even remember I was that. I was hoping you'd forgotten that we could just keep him for the whole story. As what's gonna happen? I don't recall this guy. Rewatch the I've prelude. I need the ad revenue. All right. <laughs> All right. You can watch the video if you need proof. Um, I guess. Do we have a vampire staked in our? Yes. Anyway, don't worry about it. Yeah, so... yeah it's hilarious. <laughs> All right. And you can use him as a source of blood for your experiments. So Terry did have the presence of mind to shut the door behind you. Well, thank God. Um, so this sales guy is out. You can zip tie him. Okay, we'll do that. Um, so what exactly do you want to do with him? He looks like he's going to be unconscious for a while. All right, well... Well, better just bring him back to the car and head home. All right. I guess I'm collecting bodies. Yep, put him I in the basement well. with the guy you've staked. Um, do we want to get rid of the other guy or just leave his bloodless body there? It is kind of a masquerade violation since so it's bloodless. I, I believe we should probably take the dead guy as well. Head out the fire escape. Down to the car. Yeah, I can drag them both down the fire escape. You guys head down normally. Alright. And, uh... And then we'll, um... I, I would really rather not take this hunter to the haven. Um, 
Okay, it's fine, he's unconscious. He's just in the basement. Um, <laughs> Back you know, his Lilla's head. In the basement. It's true. So You could take him somewhere else if you wanted. That's what I'm saying, I'd rather take him somewhere else. Technically, you could turn him over to the prince. prince. I could, and say, as a hunter. This is a hunter. The other one is dead. Um, I don't know, what's my humanity on that? It wouldn't be a problem, you're not... What's your I'm at six, six, but yeah. I, if I want to increase, is it a bad thing? Um, I would say you're not really directly involved. I mean, you're kind of in an awkward position because there's not really a great way to deal with it. Mm-hmm. At least you are turning them over to the authorities, the vampire the authorities. Vampire authorities. Um, so that's probably my best, most moral action. It is probably... rather than me just killing him outright. Yeah, it's better than that. <laughs> Um, I guess you the the other option that would probably be the most humane would be to let him go, but I don't think you're gonna probably yeah, do that. Yeah, no, because he's a hunter and and he's so, been, and he tries to kill me, so uh, no. So um, so yeah, so let's let's take him to Modius and I'll all right. Him over and... Yeah, so if you arrange with Modius, Modius will take possession of his okay. body. All right, and the other bloodless one, if you want yeah. to get rid of that. He will handle that. All right. So he uh, thanks you for your service to the city. He says that he uh, will grant you one minor boon. Wow, well, have a minor boon from me. I'm just racking up the boons. Yeah. I need to be putting these down on my sheet. Where's my boon? Where's my boon one? All right. So Can yeah. Give you a place to write down boons. It might be on the back. All right, so that is pretty much the end of the uh, investigation. Do you eventually want to call this Hedron guy? Yeah, I will eventually after things have quieted down. down. Um, He actually uh, tells you that um, he had um, the... um, When he gets in contact with you, he says that the seller has basically just vanished. It was uh, a pair of guys, but they just disappeared. So it was our hunter guys. These guys? The sellers? They were the sellers? Could be. That does match the description. Huh. They were the guys? It seems like it. And it was for me? Yes. Why did he think I was interested in... Um, he just says that he, you were recommended to him by one of his other So uh, this clients. was a trap, is what, you're, is what I'm thinking. It was a trap to be with the hunters. They wanted to meet and then... Could be. Could be. All right. So that is the end oh. of the session. So who won the role-playing award last time? I believe David did, didn't he? All right. So, um, in that case, David, you decide who wins this time, since Stalworth didn't show up again. Um, hmm. too bad. I would have voted for David this time for all of the research done. Yeah, no, he did those, uh, on, a ton of work. On those burglaries. That was amazing. I get the special awards. <laughs> <laughs> you have something, because that was, that was very good. Uh, I'll think about I it. I suppose um, I would... Yeah, no, I'll give it to Miles, because, like, I think the this wooing the woman, the complaining about how we were basically using him, the awkward asking to stay with, uh, in us, with us in our house. <laughs> yeah. Very in character. All right. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Jonathan, you pick up Four experience points. Everyone else gets three. All right, then. And, uh, yeah. That is going to be probably the end of the session, so I'm going to stop the recording here. It was four experience, was it?